some football here on the road at Southeast of Saline here at Steve Fritz Field. Yes, last week in Valley Heights, this week in Southeast. Another beautiful night for a football, a high school football game. And uh, they're getting commencing here with the pregame festivities. The captains of the various teams, of the two teams are out on the field. And I suppose we're going to have a coin toss to get, get the proceedings underway. As Minneapolis comes in tonight uh, after coming off of a, a tough loss uh, on the road against Valley Heights uh, in week two, um, Southeast of Saline coming off of a victory last week um, against Russell, kind of one that it kind of surprised me a little bit uh, um, when I, at the beginning of the season, looking at this one. Yes, as you said, Minneapolis defeated last week by Valley Heights at 13-7, uh, to and uh, Southeast of Saline uh, passed Russell uh, last week, 30 to six, a very and a convincing win as well. So uh, it's one of those uh, that uh, Southeast of Saline comes in, um, matching their win total from last year. I believe at one victory uh, last year, and they come back uh, tonight to try to pick up a victory against the Lions. And Minneapolis is going to kind of try to pick up their first victory tonight. As a beautiful night, as you said here um, at Southeast of Saline, Steve Fritz Field, Southeast of Saline High School. Yeah, as you indicated, Minneapolis comes into this game 0 and 2. Southeast is 1 and 1. Minneapolis uh, uh, earlier today, Dale Leach had a chance to uh, to talk with uh, um, Coach Jerry Mick about uh, about tonight's game and uh, about uh, about the team in general. So we're going to go ahead and uh, get ready to have that interview uh, that Coach. Uh, peace of mind for more than Dale had with uh, with with Coach Mick as we get her lined up here. But Minneapolis, Dave, as we get ready to go with this uh, Minneapolis, some things that uh, they're going to have to make some adjustments on, and one of those is uh, is to try to to stop the run. Yes, uh, no doubt about it. Uh, we're going to have to. Although you know, we last week we gave up 13 points. Uh, I I I don't know how we did that. Uh, but they made the plays when they had to. But uh, you're right. We're going to have to. We're going to have to have the answer to the run. We do have a couple of players back this week that may impact that some. I understand that Nick Therese is supposed to be back. Had a. Uh, I, I guess my understanding was that he had a concussion earlier in the season. And Kyler Moody back from knee surgery. So those two players should impact the defense quite a bit. Absolutely. Uh, now, once again, we're going to go ahead and try to send him back to the station for the interview with with uh, Coach Jerry Mick. You're listening to 910KNA.com as well as Channel 8 Eagle Communication. Well, welcome back to the show again, Coach. Getting ready for week three against Southeast of Saline. As you indicated in our show last week, uh, the game versus Valley Heights, in the game versus Valley Heights, uh, Exhibited the fact that we had several guys playing new positions, both on offense and defense. Yeah, we um, we, we had we had a bad bout where a bunch of injuries all stacked up right on top of each other, and it basically left us without any running backs and any linebackers. And you know, so we made do with what we had, and, and uh, you know, the kids stepped up and played to the best of their ability, and we we're pretty pleased with the, with their effort. Um, you know, just we would have had even a little bit of a run game last week. I think it would have been a couple of different ball games, as it was, uh, with just, just a few plays beating us. But, um, but, you know, I thought the kids stepped up and did what we asked them to do. Yeah, I agree. Uh, especially going on the road and only lose by six in those situations, that's probably fairly commendable. Um, in both our first two games, the defense seemed to gel as each game proceeded. Uh, do you start to see a certain identity out of the defensive unit as a whole? Well, I don't. I, I think probably right now it may be a little too early to, to do that, just because um, you know last week we put um, what four new guys out there on defense, and, and um, so I, I don't know if we can actually say that yet. We do know that our defense is solid and it's sound, and, and when the guys do their job, it's it's going to be um, it's going to be tough to beat. And um, you know, more and more of them are starting to believe in the believe in it instead of uh, you know trying to freelance or whatever. So. Um, Um, Grayson filled the spot where the hole was, and um, we threw him three balls, and he got some, got some 
nice balls, took some good shots, and and got right back up. But no, we got a we got a good group of uh, uh, good group of receivers. Um, we're probably five or six deep in that area. Um, it's just right now running backs are a little thin. Yes, definitely. All right, uh, with the return of some previously injured players, do you think we'll see an improved running game versus Southeast Saline tonight? Well, I would think so. We get Torres back tonight off his concussion, and, and uh, Moody was actually cleared to start practicing this week after his knee surgery. So um, hopefully, um, hopefully they um, will do a good job for us this week. Okay, great. All right, tonight is game two of league play for us at for one and one versus Southeast uh, versus one and one Southeast of Saline. What challenges do you anticipate from the Trojans tonight? Well, Pat's going to have a good good ball club down there, and um, these guys been playing. The, most all of them played last year because they they uh, they uh, graduated very few last year, and they actually only have two seniors this year. So these guys are going to just keep getting better every year. But um, Pat's going to have them ready to play, and they're going to play tough, and they're going to play hard. So we're going to go down there for a battle. Okay. Good. Well, thanks again, Coach Mick, for spending some time with us, and good luck in leading these Lions tonight. All right. Thanks, sir. Welcome back to Steve Fritz Field here in uh, yeah, Southeast Saline. Uh, Scott Osherman, Dave Rupert, and Dale Leach. And, uh, you know, guys, uh, uh, Coach uh, Coach talked about um, a few things in an interview, and one of the things that uh, caught my ear was uh, believing in the system. Uh, he's got a young squad. Um, he mentioned that, the fact that Southeast of Saline's got a young squad. But one of the things that caught my eye, like I said, is believing in the system. It's, a lot of that is teaching the kids. Well, he has a, a program where everybody has their responsibilities, and uh, uh, everybody has an assignment. Uh, as he said, he doesn't. He they don't do that freelance thing. Uh, I'm a little bit experienced with it, having my son played last year. And everybody has an area of responsibility, and you have to take care of your business, and your neighbor has to take care of his business. And if you do that, good things happen. And you have to guard against trying to do something that you're not is not your assignment and uh, that's what he's talking about when he's talking about believing in the system he has they have set responsibilities and you need to be sure that you get your work done Absolutely. one of the one of the things that he uh, that I didn't talk about or didn't say and I did didn't hear the coach say anything about it of course bringing you up to speed again uh, Jake Eckert is gone for the season so I just want we just need to reiterate that people if you haven't been watching or missed a game or two may not uh, realize that Eckert uh, our promising young uh, running back is gone for the season big hole yeah it is a big uh, a big hole to fill uh, Jake had a very good uh, game running as well as coming out of the backfield receiving so yeah, that is a tough a tough hole to fill well you may notice if you've uh, looked in the journal on in Friday's journal they did have some area stats in there and uh, it's feast or famine for Minneapolis. Uh, McCulloch is the number one co uh, rated quarterback, or when I say rated, I mean he has the most yards of anybody in the area. He is 40 of 75 passing for 457 yards, and that's the number one position in the area. And of course, if you have a guy that can throw and he has a lot of yards, somebody has, has to have caught those. And so our receivers are up there, too, with uh, Logan Weedle is the number three overall receiver in the area with 12 receptions and two touchdowns and 170 yards. Eckert, <laughs> interesting stat, he is number 12 in that list, having only played one game, has eight receptions for 95 yards. And Dusty Greer is uh, down in the pack, lower in the pack, with eight receptions and 86 yards. And as, as we talked about a little bit earlier, or maybe in the interview, uh, Grayson George doesn't appear in those stats yet, but last game was his basically, uh, basically was, was his uh, introduction as a receiver. And uh, as Dale talked about with the coach, he did a pretty impressive job last week, I thought, as a receiver. And this, if you're a receiver, this is it. You're gonna have, you know, obviously we have a passing game, and, it, and if you're a receiver, this is your year. Yeah, it is, and, and one of the things that, you know, we talked about on the drive home from Valley Heights was Grayson George coming across the middle. Grayson uh, filled a void when Logan got uh, got the neck 
a little bit of a twinge in the neck, and Logan uh, has been the receiver going across the middle, but Grayson did a great job of coming in and getting some of those big catches, as you mentioned. Well, the thing about it is, uh, obviously everybody knows, or, or I'm sure they do, that, that we have a passing attack, and uh, so and Weedle is up there high in the numbers, so you know they're going to double-team him. Uh, it's going to create some opportunities for that second or third receiver. I might talk a little bit about last week. Res I'm sorry. We're going to have the national anthem right now, so we will go ahead and have the national anthem. We'll be back here in just a second. Welcome back to Minneapolis High School football here. Scott Osherman, Dale Leach, and Dave Rupert. And Dave, you were just talking about uh, uh, about last week and some of the things uh, about, uh, about the squad. Well, let's talk a little bit about the results from last week. As we told you earlier, Minneapolis defeated by Valley Heights at Valley Heights. Uh, Minneapolis 7, Valley Heights 13. Sacred Heart lost to Beloit 52 to nothing. I'm not... You know, that's an interesting stat. I heard on the radio coming over here that that was the first time, and I believe, I, if I heard right, like 56 games that they've been shut out, Sacred Heart, if I heard that right on the radio today, but it is an astronomical in that amount of games yeah. since they've been shut out. So, a little, I was uh, surprised at that stat myself. Ellsworth over Republic County last week, 30-28 to 28 in overtime. Uh, Solomon was a winner against Washington County, 44 to 32 last week, and Bennington defeated Remington. I don't know what the score was. I'm thinking it was 21-19. 21-19. Close game, 21-19. I'll take your word for that. I think that game was played Tuesday Monday. because of rain. Monday night. Monday night because Monday of night. rain, and I missed that stat. So 21 to 19, we think. Bennington a winner over Remington. Southeast of Saline was uh, got past Russell last week. 30 to 6. So that brings us up to this week's games, which is Minneapolis 0 and 2 against Southeast 1 and 1. Sacred Heart 0 and 2. And I, I don't know; it'd have to be a long time. Probably you go back quite a ways to find it. Sacred Heart at 0 and 2. But they are 0 and 2 tonight against Ellsworth, who is 2 and 0. Russell 1 and 1 at Solomon tonight, who's 1 and 1. Beloit. 2-0 with an impressive win over Sacred Heart last week. Uh, Beloit 2-0 at Republic County, who is 0-2, narrowly getting beat last week by Ellsworth. Bennington is, I believe, 1-1, one one, having gotten annihilated by Hutch Trinity in week one. So that would mean Bennington would be 1-1, one and, one, and El Saline would be... I'm not, you know, I don't know how what uh, El Saline. I think El Saline is two and zero. I think uh, two and I think I heard that they uh, they're the only Saline County team that is two and zero. Well, um, one thing about it, guys, we're right next to the uh, loudspeaker here, so yeah, we should you, be able to get a full dose well, of so. uh, the announcer. So now coming into uh, coming into tonight's matchup where Minneapolis comes in. Now we talk about the fact that Minneapolis is fairly young. Let's talk for a second about Southeast of Saline. Uh, numbers of players, Minneapolis at 48, uh, Southeast Sling 37. But what's interesting, five seniors for Minneapolis, three for Southeast of Sling. Well, that would tell you that they're both young teams. Not a lot of a uh, lot of seniors, although Minneapolis does have five. And they're going to do the introductions now. As uh, uh, we get ready, Southeast of Sling, um, and, and they're all purple. Uh, with their with their uh, gray helmets on, Minneapolis in their 
uh, traveling blue pants, white jersey, and their uh, blue helmet. So Minneapolis coming in tonight uh, against the uh, Southeast of Selene Trojans. Um, Southeast of Selene uh, was a powerhouse. It has been a powerhouse for many, many years, and they uh, they were down last year. Well, yes, they were. Well, they they fought, they fell a long ways, having come from. Did they win the state championship two years ago? If not, they were they were right up there. And uh, so I guess it's feast or famine. They they went from the the top of the football high school football world in 3A to probably somewhere near the bottom last year. And uh, so. And I guess we are, we're, I don't know how this season is going to fare for us, but I thought we had a pretty successful season last year, so we'll see what Minneapolis does. It's kind of interesting to look just at the sidelines. As you in, uh, indicated, Southeast has 37 uh, rostered players, and Minneapolis has 48. And it's Minneapolis's bench over there, when, it, when they're all on the sidelines, is kind of an impressive-looking uh, uh, team. Yeah, uh, it's nice to see the numbers uh, for the Lions. As Minneapolis, uh, I didn't see who won the toss, but Minneapolis will receive um, uh, to start the uh, to start this ball game. As team captains for Minneapolis is Keegan McCulloch, Dusty Greer, uh, as well as number uh, number 54, which is Andy Griffith, and as well as number 66, Jacob Klein. So team captains for the Minneapolis Lions um, did not see. Uh, the uh, captains for the Southeast Saline Trojans. But you know the Trojans uh, are hungry coming off of last week's victory, but i got to think that the Lions are just as hungry. Well, it'll, it'll be an interesting contest. I, I like our chances tonight. Uh, <clears throat> again, we, we had a pretty key injury with Eckert being out, and uh, our running attack up to this point has been fairly non-existent. It's something that's going to have to... We're going to have to find somebody to step up to run the ball a little bit. Uh, we have a great passing uh, attack. I don't think there's any doubt about that. Keegan's got a great arm, got some capable receivers, uh, but it's pretty tough to be one-dimensional and be successful. Back deep for the Lions to receive will be number eight, Kyler Macy, as well as number four, which is Casey Ardenbride, and up, the up back would be number 22, which is Charles Shea for the Lions as the uh, Southeast Lean Trojans getting ready to kick off as they break huddle. Number 10 for the Trojans, which is Brant Weaver, a junior, will do the kicking, and he kicks it off, and it will go into the hands of Kyler Macy at about the eight-yard line. Comes to the right-hand side, um, has, a, has a little bit of room. It gets hit at about the 22-yard line before he's taken down as the Lions will start their possession on about the 22-yard line. Good view from up here as the field looks beautiful. One of the things that in past years that we've noticed is this is kind of, uh, we can have some wind up in this area. Yes, you can. I'm just glad that we're, we're here at this time of the year. I really wouldn't want to be here in late, late October, early November. It might be a little cold up here, Scott. <laughs> As the Lions will come up to the line of scrimmage in an I formation, as they'll send two receivers to the right-hand side, uh, one to the left, I formation, number 44 and number 42 for the Lions in the backfield. As the handoff will go to the fullback, number 42, and he takes it up to the 25-yard line. Number 42 is Nick Torres. So we talked about Nick Torres and Kyler Moody both being back, and they're both starting out as, uh, as the juniors in the backfield. They first give it to the fullback, which is, which is Nick Torres, as he gains about three on the play. We'll bring up a second down and about seven. Well, uh, they didn't waste any time. They got Torres right in the game. Keegan McCulloch back under center. I formation two on the right-hand side. McCulloch looks to the side. Gets it out this time. He will go into the hands of Moody. Moody this time bounces off and will take it up to about the uh, about the 27-yard line before he's taken down by numerous purple jerseys there for the Trojans. Minneapolis. Well, Torres on down one and, and Moody on down two. So the, the players returning from the injured list uh, are, are stuck right in there. Scoreboard says third and six, but it's third and three uh, for the Lions as they come up here. I formation, once again, three players, uh, two to the right-hand side. Up in tight will be uh, will be Moody and Torres. McCulloch under center this time. He hands the ball off uh, to, Mo uh, to Torres, and he's not going to get the first down. Uh, three straight running plays up the gut as the Lions will take it up to the 30-yard line, but they'll be about a half a yard short. We'll bring up a fourth down. Interesting call. Uh, I, I, I'm sure that uh, they were, Southeast was probably looking for pass, and maybe we thought we could surprise them and, and pound it up the middle. 
And close, but no cigars, uh, they say. And Minneapolis will stay out in their formation. Now, a lot of times we will see a pooch kick in this situation. I believe we will see that here as McCulloch lines up in a shotgun uh, with fourth down and one. Uh, two receivers to the right, to the left. And, yes, it is a pooch kick. And uh, it will land at about the 40 and bounce backwards before it's picked up by number 72 at the 45-yard so line. So that's, uh, Ken's, or that's Lynn, Charlie Lynn. Charlie Lynn, the long snapper. Charlie quickly got down there. Handled the ball on both ends of that. Snapped the ball and went and got it. So the uh, Trojans will take over with very good field position here with their first possession at the 45. Minneapolis goes uh, three and out with 9.49 left to go here in the first quarter as uh, their quarterback, uh, Bryant Benneke, uh, Jr. had a pretty good game uh, from what I could see last year, last week, and I looked in the stats. It looked like he had fairly good stats as well. Well, I uh, in the pregame, I was watching him. He's got an arm. He can throw it. This time they send one in motion. They do hand it off to the man in motion. He comes around the out, and it's a nice job by the Lions as he's taken out for a loss. Great job by Dylan, number, Dylan Carson, as well as number 23 for the Lions in there as well, Adam Klein. Great job by the Lions, uh, for, especially for Carson to stay at home. He did a good job. Didn't let him get the corner last week. They got the corner on us a few times, and we paid. We paid uh, not with touchdowns, but they gained a lot of yards by getting outside. And that time they contained well and stuffed the run. Second down and 12 here for the Trojans. Minneapolis with their uh, will bring their defense back up to the line of scrimmage. Andy Griffith, number 54, the nose tackle. As this time, once again, they send a man in motion, and this time they fake, and this time they will pass across, and oh, wow. they're gonna they're gonna call yeah. it. Yeah, Dusty Greer in number 22 for the Trojans. Cole uh, Van Blericon uh, bump into each other. Um, Seemed to be inadvertent, but that doesn't matter. No. You can't no. impede the receiver in his route. Yeah, and uh, we'll see pass interference against the Lions, and. Last week, I guess I, my, first my comment from last week was that uh, we were talking, if you heard last week's broadcast, the 12th man, the, it seemed like the penalties really uh, stacked up against Valley Heights last, at very key times they had penalties. And this, this will bring up a first down. 51 in the uh, right guard is Dustin Lott. 82 is Dylan Crossan on the right end. 72, Charlie Lynn, left guard. And uh, Jacob Klein, number 66, is the left defensive end. Cornerback, number 11, Dusty Greer. Yes. Linebacker, Nick Therese, number 42. Trojans will come back to the line of scrimmage here as this time they'll send trips out to the right-hand side. Empty backfield shotgun formation for Beneke as... Uh, this time he will send once again a man in motion, and this time they throw a flag. Got to be a procedure. Look like somebody jumped, possibly. They said a defensive lineman, uh, so we'll see for sure. But uh, Dale Leach says it's a defensive lineman. A defensive. So encroachment. We'll know for sure in just a second. Evidently, Southeast player indicates yep. he believes it was against Minneapolis. And so two penalties back to back on the lines. Um, is 20 yards for the uh, for the Trojans and moves them up uh, now to the Minneapolis 38 yard 37 yard line will bring up a first down and five. As we've seen the same pretty much spread formation for the Trojans to start out, they they send trips out on the right hand side. They send one of them in motion, uh, which. Uh, they option they faked the handoff once, gave it to him another time. Once again, they send him in motion once again and fake it, and this time they give it to the quarterback right up the middle, and he's got some running room up the side, and he's going to score. No, nice job by Minneapolis, number 22, which is Charles Shea. Uh, saving touchdown tackle right there as, as he takes him down at the two-yard, two, uh, excuse me, at the five-yard line. Nice job by Charles Shea. Little off tackle run, big hole. Made the most of it. As quarterback Benneke um, had, a, I mean, like I said, I didn't see the exact number on stats, but he had a good game running as well as uh, passing. And, um, he's pretty fast, but Shea ran him down. 
as shock information won the backfield. This time, tight trips to the right-hand side, and nice job by Minneapolis to stuff them there. Number 82 as well as number 51. The Lions, Dustin Dylan Lott, Crossin, and Dylan 82. Crossin. Good call Dustin there. Dustin Lott, 51, the by game. the Lions as they uh, take him down at the line of scrimmage. We'll bring up a second down and goal from the five. No game the play brings up second and goal on the five. Trojans will come back as they uh, they run a player in on each uh, with a play call uh, in between receivers number 11 uh, as well as number three long and and Huggins bring in the plays. One of the things that we haven't talked about is that dimension of the game that Minneapolis we think now has with uh, Andrew Yoxel in the in the kicking game. Hey, I'm not sure what Southeast has in regards to that, but they're down there where it could be a factor. Nice job. play by Adam Klein, number 23. Brings up Klein. the pass. Great job by Klein in there as he steps right in and knocks it. Uh, receiver was right there. Had it, uh, had it right there, but Klein did a great job. Great coverage. Good job by Adam Klein. Brings up a third down and five for, for the Lions. Clean block. For the reached, Trojans. Reached around the intended receiver and swatted it down. As Trojans will come back up to the line of scrimmage with their, with their squad here as... Benneke will be once again in a shotgun formation. This time their halfback is Layton Everhart off the right-hand side. They send man in motion across the middle and um, broken up play. Nice job as the Lions once again hit Benneke at the line. Not sure what they were trying to do on that one. Well, yeah, uh, the, the, it's a timing play with that, that back running across, and it's I think he's supposed to get it quick enough to be able to either give him the ball or take it and run with it, or uh, it's, an, it's an option you could actually pass out of it. It's the same offense that Emporia State used about four years ago when they had a guy by the name of Brian Shea down there that was one of the na like nationally ranked running backs, and he was the guy that came across there, and they would, they would either stick it to him or... or make it a, an option pass out of it and uh, it's kind of effective because everybody has to stay home and pay attention because you never know who's going to come up with the ball. Southeast of Selene calls a timeout here on 4th and 5. We're going to take one with them. You're listening to 910kina.com as well as Eagle Communication Channel 8. You're searching for the right insurance to fit your needs. Look no further. American Family Insurance has been providing security and peace of mind for more than 80 years because they want to protect what matters most. Call Scott Osherman in Minneapolis, your American Family Insurance agent. Minneapolis is a dynamic and growing community. The Minneapolis Chamber of Commerce support of the Minneapolis High School Lions sports programming is just a small part of what they do. Be a Chamber member. Come for a visit and stay for a lifetime. Bennett Autoplex supports the Minneapolis Lions. At Bennett Autoplex, you'll find a small-town family atmosphere with great prices on new and used cars. New vehicles, including Chevrolet. Welcome back to uh, <laughs> welcome back to uh, Southeast of Saline, Steve Fritz Field. As, uh, once again, technical difficulties here in the box as we come back fourth and five for the Trojans. Minneapolis has stuffed them on uh, three, straight, three straight plays here. It would be great to stop them one more time. You know, when they got down there at the, at the five or six-yard line and with first down, you're thinking, you know, it's going to be pretty difficult to hold them out, but now I'm optimistic. Shotgun formation for Beneke. And this time he'll roll to the left-hand side, looks to pass. He's going to drop back, throw it in the air, and it's overthrown. Nice job by the Minneapolis defense. Argon right, right there with the receiver. Nice job for the Lions as they do a great job of shutting them down right there. Minneapolis will take over on downs right there at the five-yard line. Great defensive stance for the Minneapolis Lions. It was, uh, although the ball there was overthrown. I don't think the I don't think the receiver could have caught that had he been out there even by himself. So the ball was overthrown, but Argon Wright was right with him, number four. Which and he had pressure. Um, did not see who was in his face, but he had pressure in his face as uh, Benicky uh, had to get rid of it quickly. I couldn't tell if that was Dustin Lott or who it was. Minneapolis takes over high formation. McCulloch under center, two receivers to the right-hand side. This time they will once again hand it off, this time to Moody, as Moody, the halfback, takes it out to uh, back the line of scrimmage. So Minneapolis, four straight running plays here to, uh, to start the, uh, the first quarter. Well, you know, you're trying to get a little, a little bit of breathing for, for sure. Yeah. Now, uh, the 7.37 remains in the first quarter. The score remains nothing to nothing. Uh, or southeast uh, in the red zone, deep in the red zone, unable to come away with points. you got to like that. Yeah. Moody and Torres, the uh, fullback, Moody the halfback, two receivers on the right-hand side, McCulloch under center. Mcculloch, uh, long snap count, uh, gets the handoff off. This time he bounces the outside. That's and Moody. 
Moody gets back, maybe a gain of one before he's taken down. Uh, Moody uh, hard running there and comes up limping. Yeah, got, yep, ah, darn not, not good. And in comes Kyler Macy as Kyler Macy uh, will uh, get in the ball game for the Lions. Kyler Macy, a sophomore coming in, will replace, uh, will replace Moody. Moody uh, coming off of uh, um, knee surgery a couple weeks ago, right? I don't know exactly when he did get knee surgery. Uh, I do know that that was more than a couple weeks ago, yeah. Uh, this time trips they send, this time it's thrown across the middle to Weedle. Nice job by the Minneapolis Lions, and that should be enough for the first down as the official comes across. Uh, we'll see for sure. It looks like um, as long as, yeah, first down. Nice job by Minneapolis as McCulloch gets it in the hands of Weedle across the middle. Minneapolis fix up their first first down of the night at the 627 mark here at Steve Fritz Field here at Southeast Desalene High School. About a, what was that, about a 10-yard pass, maybe? Yeah, uh, they Seven. needed 10 to pick it up, so probably 11 yards on the okay. pass. One in the backfield, two to the right-hand side, and we have movement there, did not see, but um, Southeast of Selene is pointing at Minneapolis at Casey Argenbright. We'll see what the call was. I, I did not see it. As, yeah, well, it looks like the Minneapolis. But, ah, the okay. defense. Defense was offside, so Southeast is lean quick to point, but uh, uh, this time it goes against the Trojans, and, and uh, Minneapolis will have a first down and five. Ball on the 20-yard line. First and five, you got to like that. Um, now we have some operating room. Two receivers on the right-hand side, two to the left, and this time they fake the handoff. They pass it up, and incomplete. Big hit right there by number three as Braden Long... Um, Hits uh, Minneapolis pretty hard. I believe Dusty Greer was the intended receiver. But a big hit by Braden Long. As Minneapolis uh, got it right there, but uh, Long comes in and hits him right as the ball hits him. Uh, good defense by the Trojans. Minneapolis will have a second down and five here as they will come back to the line of scrimmage. Once again, trips to the right-hand side, one to the left as Torres, the fullback. This time they will fake the actually give to Torres, and he will take it up to about the 24-yard line. Be about a yard short, but nice, uh, nice four-yard gain for quick junior. opener, and he and he stepped in there and uh, made a nice, nice gainer out of it. Torres uh, with a nice game. Minneapolis on receivers. It looked like in there was uh, they have uh, Grayson George as well as Logan Weedle, uh, Dusty Greer, and uh, Casey Argenbright in on the receivers. So. So it looks like uh, it looks like it's an ankle strain or something on Moody. Is uh, we get the call from Dale. Trips the right hand side for the Lions. One in the backfield, Moody. Under center is McCulloch. This time they once again hand it off to Moody uh, to Torres. Torres gets it up. Nice hard running by the junior Torres as he takes it up to about the 32 yard line. First down for the Lions. Second, third effort. Very fruitful there. Nice run by Nicholas Torres. As the Lions will come back to the line of scrimmage, as they have taken the ball from their own five to start this, uh, to start this drive, and have uh, have done nicely to get it out to the 32. Trips to the right hand side. One in the backfield is Torres. One receiver on the left. Under center is McCulloch. This time he fakes the handoff, drops back. He rolls to the left hand side, and he's going to run it up before he's taken out of bounds. Gain of about two on the play. Didn't have a lot of choice but to just take it uh, on up. Didn't uh, Once he got out on the left-hand side, uh, would have been a little bit more tough to... Uh, pretty good coverage by the defense. It was nobody open, and I'm sure that they've worked all week very hard on, on, on coverage because they know that this is a passing team. Minneapolis will come back once again the line of scrimmage. This time they have, once again... Uh, Weedle, as well as Grayson George and Dusty Greer out on the left-hand side. They throw across the middle. Oh, picked there off. And the interception right there is Dusty Greer doesn't get him on the tackle. And he'll be taken down by McCulloch, and he gets in. Yep, touchdown by the Southeast of Selene Trojans, number 20, Leighton Everhart with the pick as McCulloch tried to go across the middle. 
as a big interception for a touchdown, 32 yard uh, touchdown kickoff return, uh, excuse me, uh, interception return for a touchdown by the Trojans. Uh, you talked about the defense. They, uh, I'm sure they did practice it, and they read that one very good. They were right on it. Southeast of Sling comes back. They will come up the line of scrimmage on top, six to nothing, as they will come back up here. And with the play call, looks like they're going to go for two initially with the, uh, with the call here. Minneapolis try to stop him here. As Trojans come up to the line of scrimmage, shotgun formation for Beneke. Uh, Everhart uh, in the back to try to, to get it, and it's incomplete. Nice job by Adam Klein as the two-point conversion is no good. So with that, the score is right now 6 to nothing here, 441 left to go uh, in, this, uh, in the first quarter as Minneapolis... Uh, Minneapolis trails right now six to nothing as they will come back uh, here we're going to go ahead and keep it here for the lines as uh, you know they they get the pick on that and they get it back for a touchdown after Minneapolis had done a really good job of shutting them down especially on the defensive side um, when their offense had it but their defense scores a touchdown for the Trojans and uh, <clears throat> it's got to be one of the things that uh, coaches are going to look at and uh, just you look at that and you think uh, it's tough to give up a defensive touchdown. Yeah, that's one of those freak deals. You know, you you don't expect you don't expect to get. First of all, you don't expect to get picked, and then you certainly don't expect it to go for a touchdown. So that was kind of an unfortunate turn of events. Uh, they just happened to be in the right place at the right time. So we'll see. And the kick is really short. And it's going to go out of bounds. Wow. Now that is that is a, uh, a big mistake right there by the Trojans as the kick uh, goes out of bounds. I would assume we're going to take it. So um, they're going to make them re-kick it. Well, it depends on where they spot it, but I believe um, Minneapolis will have the option to have it at the 35, 35, if not the 40-yard line. I can't remember for sure. <clears throat> so we'll see for sure where it's put. Uh, ball went out of bounds. <clears throat> And maybe that maybe it's not an option to re-kick it. Is that not an option, Dale? Or it is an option. But I think we'd be better off. They take it at the 35. So I agree with that. So Lions will take it at the 35 as McCulloch will come back up to the line of scrimmage with his offense. This time they will have two in the backfield, and looks like uh, Moody is back. This time two in the backfield. This time they will fake the handoff. They give it uh, with an inside draw to number 44 for the Lions, Kyler Moody, and he's he's stuffed right at the line of scrimmage. Maybe even a loss of two on the play. Was on the hit. <clears throat> Kyler Moody was on the Minneapolis injury. will have a second down and uh, about 12 on the uh, 13. Second down and 13, so a loss of three on the play. So 416 left to go here in the first quarter. The Lions right now trail six to nothing. This time the Lions have come back, this time in an I formation. Charlie Lynn is the center, long snapper. Two receivers to the right-hand side for McCulloch. This time he fakes the handoff, and this time he'll throw it up. And, oh, in between, right into, right in the hands of Logan Weedle and bounces off. That will be an incomplete pass. We'll bring up a second, the third down, and 13. Four, four attempts for McCulloch with one reception. Weedle has 11 yards on the one reception. Uh, intended for Greer one time. It was incomplete and the interception. And that uh, pass there intended for Weedle, incomplete. It's hard to tell if wind is a factor down the field. Now, we're up high here, and there is a breeze up here, but it's hard to tell. The flag's not moving, so it's hard to tell. McCulloch flushed out, rolls down. He's going to run it, and... He's still, before he's knocked out of bounds, at about the 37-yard uh, line. We'll bring up a fourth down and eight on the play for the Lions. I would say wind is no factor tonight, Scott. Yeah, it doesn't look like it is. Uh, except there is a breeze up here, but it doesn't look like there's anything down there. Minneapolis will bring in their punt squad. And I believe this uh, uh, Andrew Yoxel uh, will do the punting right now. We have not seen... Uh, Andrew's got a great leg. Uh, have not. I don't think he punted yet this year. 
So standing back at his own 25, good snap, and a quick release, and it's taken. Nice job by the Minneapolis Lions. Glide <laughs> right on Klein it. Klein is right there at the 40-yard line. That's a, is Adam Klein torqued tonight, or is he torqued? <laughs> Adam Klein was right there, and <clears throat> Adam did a great job of just getting right in there and uh, 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 just hitting him hard. Nice job by Klein. The Trojans will take over on their own 40-yard line. Now, uh, <clears throat> their first possession, they did drive the ball well. Uh, we'll see Minneapolis uh, stuffed them on four straight plays on the goal line. We'll see how their defense does right here to shut them down. We all felt like <clears throat> that the uh, um, we all felt like the the uh, defense got better as the game went last week. Yes, it did. Uh, Minneapolis down 6 nothing with 340 remaining in the first quarter. Shock information for Benneke. He hands off to the full, fullback Everhart, and he's taken down for a loss. Nice job by Minneapolis. Number 54 in on the tackle. Andy Griffith in there for the Lions, as well as, I believe, number 42, Nick Torres. The defensive line is, has uh, done a very nice job so far this evening. Torres, a linebacker, coming in to assist on that as well. But uh, there's numerous players in on that. Nice job by the Lions to, on the defensive side. Defensive lineman, 82, Dylan Crossan. Shock information for Beneke. Jacob Pine, number 66. This time they pass. And once again, nice job by Minneapolis. As Adam Klein right there on the reception uh, picks up a three on the reception. They go to their receiver, um, I believe Weaver, um, number 10, Brant Weaver, as he gets it. But Adam Klein, great job sticking him right there after he caught the ball. Third down and eight for the Trojans. Now, I, I, I'm, I'm just thinking here, Adam Klein is a junior, is that correct? Adam's a junior and uh, just doing a great job of, on the defense. He did a great job last year. Sticking it, uh, sticking the players. This time they send two receivers to the right, two to the left, shotgun. They send one in motion. They come across. They do hand it off. And nice block. They do a reverse. And can they get them on the outside? And there's a block right there. But nice job by the Minneapolis Lions to stop them with a loss of two as they run a, uh, run a reverse to the opposite side. Number 19, Trent Collins on the carry as he's taken down with a loss of one. Bring up a fourth down and nine. Great job by the Minneapolis defense. There's, a, there's an example where you have your assignment, stay with your assignment, and uh, just do take care of your business. They stayed home and, and busted the play. Quarterback is back to punt, which is Bryant Beneke to punt. He'll be standing at his own. And we got a penalty. I think. Yeah, I'm not sure. Minneapolis maybe in the neutral zone. If, <laughs> I'm not sure what. We'll see what it is here. Procedure. No. Procedure on the offense. Did not, not see that I'm one. I'm not sure if they lined up out off sides or exactly what. I, I don't. I didn't see any movement. Did you? Uh, it kind of uh, it kind of indicated when the official came over to, to Haxton. It looked like maybe he moved the ball. Possible. I don't, I, I don't know. Did not quite see it, but uh, whatever it was. Uh, it's five yards. Five yards. Uh, however you look at it. Benneke will now stand at his own 24-yard line. Back deep for the Lions will be Macy as well as... Um, Good defensive stand by Minneapolis. Calls a fair, fair catch, catch by Argenbright. So Argenbright quickly calls a fair catch at the 30, and he will... Good decision. Minneapolis will take the ball at their own 30. So the Lions will have it. A minute 21 left to go here uh, in, the, uh, in the first quarter. And uh, we're going to uh, turn over to Dale here for a word from our sponsors. Uh, actually, I don't know that Dale has his mic. Dale, you got it ready? You betcha. Bennett Autoplex supports the Minneapolis Lions. At Bennett Autoplex, you'll find a small-town family atmosphere with great prices on new and used cars, new vehicles including Chevrolet, Pontiacs, GMC, Buick, and Jeep, serving the customers since 1957. Bennett Autoplex, Minneapolis, and Salina. One in the backfield for the Lions, two to the right. This time they fake the handoff. They look, they throw it over to Macy. Macy picks it up and is going to have the catch with about a gain of four on the play <clears throat> before he uh, falls to the ground and then hit at the same time. Well, Minneapolis will have it at their 34, gain of three on the play. We'll bring up a second down and seven. Minute three left to go here in the first quarter. Six to nothing, Trojans on top after the uh, <clears throat> interception for a touchdown. The Lions uh, had done a great job on the defense of shutting them down on four straight downs on the goal line. Minneapolis now with one in motion as Macy goes across 
to the left-hand side. This time, McCulley drops back. He'll look to throw again, throws it up, and throws it just over the top of Casey Argumbright as he tries to go to the left-hand side to Argumbright and just goes over the top of his head. We'll bring up a third down and seven. 39 seconds left here in the, thir in the first quarter. Six passes attempted, two completions for 15 yards with uh, Weedle catching an 11-yard uh, pass and Macy with a four-yard reception. Macy will come out as Grayson George comes in. <clears throat> It'll be on the right-hand side. Um, uh, Argon Bright as well as Argon Bright on the right-hand side. They'll send trips to the right, which is Greer, George, Grayson George, as well as Logan Weedle. One in the backfield. They fake the handoff. They will look to pass. McCulloch is going to run it himself. Spins on up, and he's going to be still on his feet, but I look, think he's going to be about a half a yard short. Nice job by McCulloch on third down. We'll bring up a third down, and uh, it looks like about, about one on the play. We'll see for sure where they spot the ball now. It will definitely be one as uh, uh, we'll be a fourth and short here. Keegan, Keegan was taking notes last year from Jared Smith. That was his move. He'd hit that defender and spin and uh, get, get an extra three or four yards on it. Didn't quite work out that way for Keegan, but the idea was the same. So we're going to end the first quarter here with uh, Southeast Saline Trojans on top by a score of six to nothing here as the Trojans on top here at the end of the first quarter. We are also uh, uh, hear from work from our sponsors as Minneapolis is a dynamic and growing community. The Minneapolis Chamber of Commerce support the Minneapolis High School Lions sports programming. It's just a small part of what they do. Be a chamber member. Come for a visit. Stay for a lifetime. It's fast. It's furious. And it's fun. It's Minneapolis Raceway. Minneapolis Raceway has brought you exciting races to central Kansas and will continue this tradition. This fast track will give you and your family some of the most exciting races ever seen. You know, who, who needs, who needs uh, entertainment uh, Who needs uh, entertainment personalities when they got us up here to read the commercials? I'll tell you. I, yeah. <laughs> we, we, can, we can just do it all up here. What do you think, guys? <laughs> Minneapolis here uh, uh, to get ready to start the second quarter. Uh, trails by, by six. Uh, with fourth down and a short one here for the Lions to start the second quarter. Well, the, the uh, only score of the game so far was on the interception by Southeast, which returned for a touchdown. It resulted in a 6-0 lead. They were unable to convert the two-point uh, conversion. They did not try to kick it. They tried for two and failed, so after one, Minneapolis trails by six. And Minneapolis will line up. We'll see what uh, looks like McCulloch is going to go under center. So all indications point that they will go for it here on fourth down and short here. Trips to the right-hand side, one in the backfield, and McCulloch is going to take it out. I, I believe he's got it. He, I don't know. He le lunges forward. It depends. Uh, the back judge looks like he's, uh, he's got it in the right place. I'll tell you what, it's going to depend on where they put that ball. And I line don't judge, know. Line judge right on the 41. Which is I'm going to say. I don't think they got it. I'm going to say it's short. <laughs> so they uh, look like they're going to they, measure. I, I think they're about from my from up here. It looks like they're maybe two, maybe a couple inches short. It's hard to tell from here, but it looked like the back. The one judge gave him a good spot. Yeah. yeah. But then the uh, the uh, the other judge comes up and puts the ball right down there. So I I think the coach is saying the same thing. One guy on one side was on one side of the line, and the other one was on the uh, other side of the line. And I think they're going to be short by a credit card. And Coach Mick is talking to the white hat about it. And Keegan went to the side where the other ref was. Uh, We're both no, no point. Wow. It's first down. I'll be darn, guys. We're I thought it was going to be short. We from up here it looked like it would be short, but Minneapolis. Uh, it's a good thing, I guess. We're here we talk yeah. about entertainment personalities we are not officials yeah <laughs> we just have opinions <laughs> we we definitely had opinion on that one i didn't think they got it but great job by the lines as mcculloch lunges forward and i think also it helped uh nick torres gave him a good shove from the back as well <laughs> minneapolis first down and 10 trips to the right hand side torres in the backfield this time they'll hand it off to torres and he'll take it up for a gain of about two on the play as he takes it up to about the 43 44-yard line as Minneapolis will have a second down and eight. Good hard. He hits, a, good. he hits that hole fast and hard. That's exactly right, Dale. He, that's a that's a nice, crisp run. Minneapolis come back to the line of scrimmage. McCulloch gets a play from the side. Southeast to Saline defense. 
Looks like uh, Southeast has got an equipment problem as they're trying to get it fixed. And uh, official right there to try to see if he got her fixed or not. And looks like they do. So Minneapolis will come with the line of scrimmage. 11-16 remains in the first half. Trips on the right-hand side, one in the backfield, one to the left. McCulloch under center, Torres the back. <clears throat> it's time they will fake the handoff. McCulloch drops back, he's going to throw up, has, he's going to wheel. Oh, just off his fingertips or it would have been paid her. Nice job by McCulloch to air it out. Logan would have had another half a step, uh, would have been right smack dab into his arms. Logan did a nice job of trying to pull that one in, just a tad bit long, but great effort by both McCulloch and Weedle. Just off the fingertips. It was there, baby. <laughs> I knew we should have taken the mic away from, <laughs> from Dale as Minneapolis uh, goes for it on second and eight and uh, had, an, had a great opportunity right there. Good play call there for the Lions. As this time they'll send uh, two to the right and two to the left. As one in the backfield, third down and eight. This time McCulloch will drop back to pass once again. They throw off Argon the right. And I believe he got a it. Yeah. No, it was a trap. Yeah. Came off the grass. And Argon Bright's trying to argue with him, but uh, yeah, yeah. I, I have to agree with the official. I think he was pleading, <laughs> not arguing. <laughs> so... Fourth down and eight, and Minneapolis will bring in their punt squad to punt the ball. As Now, last time we noticed, uh, uh, Yoxel had a, had a good punt, got it off very quickly, but, uh, but uh, number 19 for the uh, Trojans, Trent Collins, uh, was quickly in on that and almost got a block. See if he comes in again. Nice job by Minneapolis. This time it's a great punt. And, oh, wow, nice job by Minneapolis uh, as he digs, as the punt goes all the way down. Matt Mortimer... <laughs> has to back up about 10 yards, and he receives it uh, falling backwards. Great job by the, by the uh, uh, junior to pull that one down. Well, great by, job. <laughs> great putt by the freshman. Yeah, a great, great you know, job. That, that, this, that kicking game is going to be a lot of fun to watch the next four years, people. And the only reason I think he hasn't been punting so far is due to the knee. He had a strange yeah, knee. Up there in scrimmage. Yeah, and he's, and he's done the extra. He's kicked some extra points. We've seen that. We, he's kicked a field goal, but the but this is the first time we've seen him punt, and wow. Uh, Unusual year. We have a, a passing game and a kicking game. As the Trojans will bring in a shotgun here, as Beneke and shotgun, they will send two to the right-hand side, two, uh, three to the right-hand side, two to the left, empty backfield, as they'll send one in motion. And this time they fake, and they give it right at the gut, and wow, big hole right there. And he's still on his feet, and nice job. Big run there by Beneke as he's finally taken down by Shea, and uh, Shea's been all over the field tonight, and it's a good deal because he saved a couple big plays. So a big run there up the gut as an empty backfield creates the big hole as uh, um, Minneapolis caught off guard as they go right up the gut. Just went off right tackle, had a nice hole, made the most of it. Gain of about 23 on the play. We'll bring up a first down for the Trojans as this time, once again, uh, trips to the left-hand side this time. Um, only one over here as uh, a little confusion. They looked to pass. Nice job by Minneapolis as they got a sack there. Uh, all started by number 54 for the Lions. Andy Griffith. Andy Griffith helped out by 72, Charlie Lynn. Great job by the Lions. And Austin Crossan in there also. Austin Crossan in there as well. Nice job by the Minneapolis Lions. I've been impressed with the defensive line tonight. They've really been solid. Other than two plays. <laughs> well, uh, I, I, I know. I mean, overall. That's overall, just, though, uh, you, they've given up uh, two big plays. But, uh, you know, other than that, they've, they've been very solid. And they've, they've done a great job. Third, second down and uh, 14, maybe 15 on the play. Um, one in the backfield. Shock information to the right. They will send one in motion. And this time they will hand off to that one in motion. And nice job by the Lions. They stay at home. Flags on the grass. Number 20 may have gotten a hold on that one. We'll see for sure. But uh, Minneapolis did a great job of staying at home on, on the right-hand side. And it is a holding call against the Trojans. That will back them up 10 uh, from, the, uh, from the line of scrimmage or from the spot. Spot foul. So it depends on where it occurred. But it looks like it took place at about the... Uh, 
about the 23 or 24, so that'll back him up 10. Or excuse me, the 37. I'm going the wrong direction. Sorry about that. And they will have the ball now at the 27. So that will bring up a second down and about 25 here um, with 9:26 left to go in the second in the first half. Big, uh, big uh, penalty right there. Yes, it was. Nice that, job by Minnie. That is second and a long ways to go. 25. Yep. So long they don't even want to put it on the scoreboard. Trips to the right-hand side, to the left. I'm assuming they'll send one in motion. They do not this time. Nice job. Oh, oh. Minneapolis had a chance uh -oh. right there. Dodges another one. And Minneapolis still doesn't get him before he's taken down all the way up to the uh, – Beneke takes it all the way up to the 48-yard line. Big run by Beneke as he dodges the numerous tackles right there. Uh, uh, junior quarterback does a great job of using his feet. Wow. He's one shifty dude. Kind of reminds me of somebody we used to call Zigzag and you know who years ago. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, I hate to but I'm not sure who you're talking about here. So hey, oh God, we got in trouble one year with Zigzagging. So I... I'm out of that on this yeah, one. Yeah, so we'll just stay, I'll, I'll just stay neutral on this one. Yeah, we'll we'll tell you about that later. To the right hand side, to the left, one in the backfield for Beneke. As he uh, fakes the handoff, throws up the middle, and a first and and more as he breaks the tackle and and more, and he's got the touchdown. Wow, big play right there, number ten, Bryant Weaver gets the reception at about his own forty and then takes it on, breaks one tackle, and takes it on in. And uh, um, big, uh, uh, big touchdown pass and reception right there by the Trojans as they score on a 53-yard touchdown completion. Wow, big play right there. Yes, it was. 53-yard pass play for Southeast results in six points. So Trojans will come back, and they will go for two here as they will send uh, trips on the right-hand side in tight, though, and Beneke will keep it himself and roll the outside and will not get it. Nice job by Minneapolis Dusty Greer as well as number 66 for the Lions. In on the tackle, Jacob Klein. Great job by the Lions, and that will uh, make the score 12 to nothing here with 6.43 left to go in, in, the, uh, in the first half. Autotech just isn't just a repair shop. No, Autotech's a professional service center to find the most up-to-date equipment available to get your vehicle up and running. Autotech, truly professional, truly the best. Scott Studio in Minneapolis does all types of signs from vehicle graphics, banners, racing, full-color decals, retail signs, and much more. If you need a sign, here's your sign, Scott Studio, where quality is promised and the price is always right. Well, I was out put on my jacket at the beginning of the beginning of the game, and now the other guys are making me feel better. What's that? My jacket's on too. Yeah, I had to, I gave up early. I put my jacket on. It's, it's actually quite nice, but I'm gonna put my jacket on anyhow. Well, that's gonna be the no. I, I Minneapolis picks it up. That's at about the Macy. Man. Number eight, is that yeah, Macy, was? as he picks oh, it up at about the 15-yard line, gets it out to, it looks like, about the 25. Uh, ball rolled around quite a bit on that one before he finally picked it up. Got a short return. Decent field position. Above the 20, about the 23 for Minneapolis. Minneapolis trails 12-0, 6.37 remains in the half. Minneapolis will come back in an I formation. Two receivers to the right, one to the left. As Minneapolis will come back here this time, they will pitch the ball uh, back to the outside. And he breaks it on the outside, which is Moody. Gets it out to the 32-yard line. Nice little run by number 44 for the Minneapolis Lions. Kyler Moody as he gets it and runs it out to the 32-yard line. Nice run by Moody. They're going to spot it at the 41, but still a good run by by the junior Moody is Minneapolis will have a second down and three. Here with 6-10 left to go in 
in the first half. Had some positive rushing this game. As we told you, the rushing rushing was non-existent last game at Valley Heights. I formation once again for the Lions to the right-hand side. This time they didn't give it off to Moody, and Moody had a little pocket right there. Um, he does fall forward to about the 44-yard line. Should be about a half a yard short here for third down as uh, Minneapolis will. I just, I have been confused on the spots all night long. Um, I always felt like the uh, the judges from the side bring it in. They're going to measure this, but I, I believe they're short. But uh, uh, we'll see here. See how 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 much I'm wrong on this one, guys. Just so you know, I am wearing glasses and uh, don't see very well all the time. And the spot is down. Let's see where the chain's at. And hey, I'm finally right for the change. And it's a half length of the football. Yep. Maybe not even that. Very close, but uh, short football. Short football. Maybe my uh, maybe my flag football team's uh, football junior size football. <laughs> but still, as the uh, I want to say hi to my family and all the other folks out there listening, and uh, to us on Channel 8 as well as 910KNA.com. Thank you for listening, and thank you to our sponsors. Minneapolis comes back to the line of scrimmage here on third and short. 7.42 left to go here in, uh, we must have a number out on the scoreboard because I said six earlier, so <laughs> 7.42 left to go here. This time they will hand it off to Torres, and Torres, I can have a nice job by Torres. Torres. Gets it all the way up to the 40-yard line before he's taken down. First down by Nick Torres. Nice hard running. We, we missed that the last couple of weeks. Last week especially not having Torres and Moody, and they have been a big help so far tonight. That game would have been a completely different outcome last week with a healthy running back. McCulloch will come back with his squad to the line of scrimmage here as they come back up here. Minneapolis in the huddle still, excuse me. As 7-12 left to go here in the first half. This time they will have two in the backfield for the Lions, two receivers on the right-hand side, two to the left. McCulloch under center. This time they go, flags in the air. Fake, and they uh, hand it off to Torres, but um, got some movement before the play started, so I Probably believe. an illegal procedure. Movement by Minneapolis, yes. So Minneapolis legal procedure, so that'll back them up five. We'll bring up a first down and 15. So ball will be placed on the 35-yard line for the Lions. There seemed to be a little indecisiveness going on in that entire play. When Keegan came in, he was consulting his armband there for a play, and it, it the huddle didn't break up crisply. It just, just had a feel that things were out of sync. Uh, Keegan came to the line, and it was still he was still checking his armband. He just didn't have a feeling that everybody had had their act together on that play, and the referee didn't think so either. So once again, still more a little bit more confusion there by McCulloch. He looks at the sidelines, I formation, two receivers on the left hand side. As Minneapolis this time will snap it, he'll drop back to pass. Looks across, rolls the right hand side, doesn't have anything. Is going to throw across the field. Has. Weedle and Weedle, great job at the 20. He was taken all the way down the 10. Great job by Logan Weedle and Keegan McCulloch. Guys, uh, as you will see on the on the replay, about a 47 yard, wow, 47 yard pass back across the field is uh, well, not quite across the field, but a great job by a pass by McCulloch as he airs it out and Logan Wheel runs it right down. Nice job by the Minneapolis Lions. Takes it all the way down to the 14-yard line. Uh, maybe the 13-yard line. Minneapolis will have a first down and 10. First and 10. Uh, it's still hard to tell, I believe. Ball's on the 12-yard line. It's on the 12, yes. It's a nice reception by Wheel. Eye formation for the Lions. They will hand it off to Torres, and Torres will take it up to the 10 before he's taken down. We'll bring up a second down. And eight. Uh, Minneapolis sets uh, four completions, four for eight. For, uh, let's see, Weedle has 11. He has 58 yards. And Macy has one reception for 15 yards. As this time Minneapolis will come back with Greer and Weedle on the right-hand side. Argerbright on the left. Two in the backfield, Moody and Torres. This time they will pitch to Moody. Moody on the right-hand side will try to go in. He 
Uh, we'll be taken down for a loss. Great job by the Trojan defense as he gets it out to about uh, about the 11-yard line. Well, uh, maybe lose one on the play. <laughs> Looks like they spotted on the 12, so. Close <laughs> to the yard. It was on the 11. It was on the 11, so. Minneapolis has 73 yards passing with three receptions. Weedle two receptions, one for 11, one for 47. And as I said earlier, Macy with one reception for 15 yards. They have trips to the left-hand side, one to the right. They'll send Macy in motion as they will roll McCulloch on the outside. McCulloch drops in. He will run it, slides up, kicks on the outside, still on his feet, spins on the outside, still going, as he'll finally be taken down. A lot of running for about three yards on the play, but a great job by McCulloch before he's finally taken down at about the nine-yard line, maybe the ten, and that will bring up a fourth down. I'm assuming we... Might see Yoxel here. And it looks like we do. This will be, this will be fun. So this will be a 27-yard field goal attempt for Yoxel. As Minneapolis holder will be Casey Argenbright. And snap is down. Kick is up. And it is... Hard to tell from here, but it's, it's good. good. Nice job by Minneapolis Andrew Yoxel as he kicks a 27-yard field goal. Wow, guys, that is so Second exciting. Second field goal of the year. So exciting to see. It's we, we had nice to have. 2001, none since then until this year. <laughs> nice to see as, uh, as I think he could have yeah, hit that one from 40. So nice job by Yoxel as it makes the score 12-3 to as the Minneapolis Lions get on the board here at 4.05 left to go here in the first half as we get a word from our sponsors here as Minneapolis. Um, the nice thing about that is that wasn't a straight on kick. That was off at an angle and it was off. right through. All right, CNR Plating would like to take the time to thank their many friends and customers for making their business what it is today. Kevin also wants to wish the Minneapolis Lions a great season. CNR Plating, happy to be a Minneapolis Lions backer. Also, City Pharmacy has brought you quality professional pharmaceuticals since 1963. Joe and Amber Wall will help you with your medications, durable medical equipment, cosmetics, gifts, and greeting cards. Your hometown pharmacy, City Pharmacy, downtown Minneapolis. Andrew Yoxel back in as he will kick the ball off. The ball's on the 40 as we have 4.05 left to go here in the first half. Yoxel to kick, and ball's down. Kick is up, and be taking it about the 10. It's much dropped, and Shay and... and <laughs> Shay. Nice job and by Klein. Shay and Klein. <laughs> <laughs> Klein is, he is all over. Nice job by Adam Klein. One thing about Yoxel, the old cameraman has to learn a new trick this year. In the past, when it's come to uh, point after touchdown kicks or field goal attempts, I always have zoomed out as soon as the ball is kicked. You never know where it's going to go, you know? Yeah. You can stay right <laughs> on. I'm just learning to zoom right in on the field goal post. <laughs> 3.59 remain in the half. Minneapolis trails. 12-3. You know, I want to go back to Adam Klein on that, Dave. Adam Klein just had a beeline on him, and he did a great job of staying with it and got a nice nice grabbing tackle there. Shotgun formation for Benneke. Drops back to pass, throws it up, and it's going to be picked. Nice job by Minneapolis. Shea. Shea gets the pick, and he's going to be taken down at the 31, but great job by Charles Shea as he comes up with a great pick, and he read that one perfectly. Nice job by Shea. That's the break that we need if we could come away with some points here it'd yeah. be huge nice job by Shea that was that was perfect he read that one perfect and I, I don't he, he looked to me like he was the intended receiver <laughs> it really did he did a nice job on that one as Minneapolis will have the ball on their on the Trojan 31 here as they will have trips to the right hand side shotgun formation this time for McCulloch Torres in the backfield one to the left for the Lions McCulloch with the shotgun. Drops it back. Oh, Greer. Oh, yes. Oh. oh. Leads him a little bit too much as he tries to get it to Greer. As uh, Greer would have had a little bit of running room, but he had to lunge forward to try to catch it just out of his hands. We'll bring up a second down and 10 as Minneapolis quickly goes to uh, with the pass on the right-hand side. Nine attempts. Three completions. Three for nine. Minneapolis once again trips to the right-hand side. Shock information. Argenbright out on the left. Out on the right would be Greer. 
um, George and Weedle, and this time they hand it off to Torres, and Torres is taken down by number 64 for the Trojans, Matt Butler, as the junior steps in and, and gets a, a tackle in the backfield. You know, we, uh, we talked about the lack of seniors. They've got 13 juniors on this team, and they've been a pretty good part of this squad, and they've done a lot of, uh, uh, most of the kids we're calling off are juniors. They got a year under their belt, a lot of uh, underclassmen last year for the Trojans, and uh, a lot of experience coming back for them with another year under their belt. To the right-hand side, to the left, for the line, shotgun formation from McCulloch, third and 11. Drops back to pass once again, throws it up the middle, and just out of reach for Logan Weedle as McCulloch tried to go, it looked like a seam down the middle, and just couldn't quite match up with uh, with uh, Weedle on that one. We'll bring up a fourth down 11 ball on the, uh, looks like a 32 yard line. With three minutes left, I would assume that this is four down territory. I yeah, I would assume, yeah, they're not going to plan here. It's, it's just good going to the end zone, so. So, but, oh, I've seen, I've seen punts that wouldn't go into the end zone. Trips to the right hand side, one to the left, Torres in the backfield. And they don't. They are looking to pass. They throw it up. Has Grayson George. Does he get it? No. Just out of his reach. Is uh, tried to tried to get it off his off of his shoulder and couldn't pull it down. So Minneapolis goes four plays and out and uh, turnover on downs. Trojans uh, will take it back. But forward. that's that's still that's still decent field position for for us. I mean, if you're going to turn over the ball, that's not a bad place to do it. However, they do have uh, three minutes, or just under three minutes to do something with here, and uh, this would be big if we could hold it to a 12-3 uh, difference here. Trojans. Nine points, nine point difference. Trojans will come in the line of scrimmage. Benicky will bring his squad up as he will send two to the right-hand side, one to the left. They have one in a uh, in a wing on the right-hand side, one in the one. In the fullback, they hand it right off to Everhart, and Everhart will take it uh, at the line of scrimmage before he's knocked back a yard. Maybe a loss of one on the play. We'll bring up a second down and 11. Defensive line closed very well right there. There was no, no daylight, nothing to run to. Pretty solid defense by the front line of Minneapolis. As coming back to Dusty, Gr uh, Dusty Lott, uh, Dustin Lott was... Uh, Basically right there in the hole they tried to run through, and he had it, had it pretty well stuffed. As this time the quarterback in a shotgun, Benneke, and well, fakes the handoff, throws it up, and incomplete. And nice job by Adam Klein in on the defense. Great back break up there by Adam Klein. As they, did he get a hand on it? I, I yes, couldn't he did. see it. All right. Tried to go to Jordan Huggins, and that will bring up a third down and 11 for the Trojans. 2.08 left to go here in the first half. It's been big plays that have uh, that have uh, have gotten us. We've done very good on uh, shutting down. They've gotten a few big plays that have, that have hurt us. They'll have two to the right, two to the left. This time they will once again fake. They'll try it again. Try it again, and they overthrow the receiver as Minneapolis had some pressure. Nice job by Minneapolis to get some pressure in there as Dustin Lott was in on the pressure uh, as Minneapolis uh, did a great job of getting in his face. We'll bring up a fourth down and 11 uh, for the Trojans at their own 31. Your, your favorite uh, coach there, Roop, was chewing on that receiver for something. <laughs> well, I, I can't deny it. Victory would be sweet against Haxon. He kind of is the guy that kind of makes you Enjoy it when you can beat him, but it's hard to do. Back at about his own 20, and he will get a good high, high school high kick. And oh, oh my goodness. that might be true. Oh, yes. And it bounces luckily <laughs> into the hands of Kyler Macy. <laughs> wow. As, uh, as ball had a little bit of a. Uh, I'm not sure the back touched it, did he? Well, I'm not sure, but it, it was close enough that yeah. I wouldn't have wanted to leave that to somebody's yeah. discretion. No, no. The, the ball had a little bit of a, it was a knuckleball. It didn't have real good uh, 
spin or whatever you want to say, and right at the last it died, yeah. and Argenbite was expecting it to come to him, and, and the and the wind, there really no wind, but the, the air caught it in such a way it was a knuckleball that came short, and he wound up being too deep for it to make get the handle on it. You know, we do kind of sit down in a valley a little bit here, and it may have been when the wind got up a little bit, it may have caught it, but uh, McCulley back to pass, throws across, ooh. Well, a, lot, a lot of purple over there. there. A lot of Very. purple over there. Very close on that, that was one. Intended for Greer. Picked off again, but uh, luckily it falls. Uh, Look like Cole Van Blericon, the uh, senior, uh, was the closest uh, <laughs> closest jersey there, just the wrong color. Three receptions for 12 attempts, passing for Minneapolis. Trips to the right hand side. Shotgun formation for McCulloch. One in the backfield is Torres. Drops back to pass. Throws across. Has Grayson there it George is. over nice the middle. Job by Grayson George over the middle. And it's a nice catch. And it takes a hit as well. But Got a 16-yard reception for George. Great job by Grayson there. As the ball will be on the 47-yard line. Minneapolis come back here. Minute 43. Shotgun formation. To the right, to the left. Torres in the backfield. As snap is back. Minneapolis drops back to pass once again. And this time it's caught by Logan Weedle. That was and it. That was a good pass. The only person that could catch that ball was Weedle. It was well delivered. Nice, nice and low. Weedle went down and got it. Minute 18 left to go. Minneapolis will have a little bit of confusion here. They're going to go trips to the right, one to the left as there a lot of time coming off the clock here. Shotgun here, once again, McCauley this time rolls. He's going to have to, uh, rolls back the right-hand side, and he'll get it off. Nice job. Does he get it? No. Incomplete. Tries to get it in the hands of Grayson George. He made the, the catch, but he just wasn't able to keep his toes in bounds. Couldn't stay in, but uh, nice pass, nice uh, nice grab, just just not enough uh, real estate. Stops the clock, though, with 57 seconds, third down and seven. Five receptions for 15 attempts, 93 yards passing. So Minneapolis right now trails by nine, 12 to three, 57 seconds left. Trips the right-hand side, shotgun formation, Torres in the backfield. A lot of pressure up the gut. McCulloch will run it. He will come up to the right-hand side, gets on the outside before he's taken down at about the 38-yard line uh, on third down. And he'll be short of the first down. We'll bring up, I uh, should be fourth down here. So clock still running with 37 seconds left for the Lions. Minneapolis will have it fourth down and two here. Uh, if you got a t 29 seconds left, I, I'd, I'd call a timeout. They've wasted enough time on this. They may just be content to go in at halftime with. Uh, I don't know why we're not taking a timeout. They finally do take a timeout, but uh, I'm not sure they could run the clock completely down. They would have had to take a penalty. We'll, we'll take a so Minneapolis takes a timeout. As right now, 17 seconds left here in the first half. Uh, trails 12 to 3. Um, as we're here at Steve Fritz Field, southeast of Selene High School. And once again, a word from our sponsors. State Bank of Delphus and the Otter County Bank of Minneapolis are locally owned community banks, which offer traditional accounts such as checking, savings, certificates of deposits, IRAs and loans, online and online banking. But most important, they're committed to making your banking experience as easy as pers and personal as possible. Member FDIC, an equal housing lender. There's nothing more important than our children. That's exactly why the Lion's Den was established in Minneapolis, so they could get together in a clean and health environment and have fun. It's a great place to party, the Lion's Den, downtown Minneapolis. Minneapolis uh, here, Dave, as they come back, 17 seconds left, fourth down and three. Um, do you take a shot at the end zone here? Well, it'll be interesting to see what they decide to do. I, 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 I just, I'm not sure that they know yet what they're <laughs> going to do. They're over there talking about it. Uh, they're going to have go a decision by consensus. Get closer Say that again. I'd go for the first down and get closer before I uh, take a shot at the end zone. Well, you're out of time, Dale. 17 seconds. Well, the clock's going to stop if you if, go out of bounds or out of bounds. Ch move the chain. Uh, and we got a timeout yet. We still have a timeout left. So, yeah, and you may be right. Maybe the go for the go for the gusto here. 
Six points look pretty good. Two I can't deny right. that. To the left, McCulligan is shotgun, drops back to pass, throws yep. it up, man, it's overthrown. So tries to go to Logan Weedle and just airs it out too much. And with 12 seconds left, that will turn the ball over to the Trojans as they will have 12 seconds left on the clock. All right, Minneapolis going to go in at uh, half, it would appear, I hope, with 12 seconds remain that we don't give up any points. 12 to 3 is, um, <laughs> I would think, um, Haxon would probably try to air one out here. <laughs> I could be wrong, but uh, 12 seconds left. We'll see for sure what he does here. But um, they're going to send two to the right-hand side, one in a, uh, on the wing on the right-hand side, one on the left, one in the backfield, and they do quickly pass across the middle. And, oh, my goodness, they do break a tackle. Yeah, wow. That would be huge. That would be, and it's a, another block, and it's going to be a touchdown. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, you wouldn't have, you shouldn't have. Ah, that's too bad. Wow, that is huge as, as the Trojans get it into a slot. And, wow, big touchdown right there as Minneapolis gives up, gives up a, gives up a, uh, uh, gives up a touchdown right there. And they're going to they're gonna try to get the, uh, uh, they're going to try to go for a two-point conversion here. But, wow, that's a backbreaker right there. 18-3, to three, that extends the lead. That, that is just, you just can't let that happen. I mean, I say that, I guess you can, but that's too bad. Yeah. Two receivers on the right-hand side, one to the left, as one in the backfield, Beneke, well, keeping himself, and he'll roll the right-hand side, he's in for 10. And they're going to make the two-point conversion here. So, 20 to 3 is the score at the end of the first half as, as the uh, Trojans take uh, a lead. Wow, big play. We've talked about it. The big plays have hurt us, and they've been three. Uh, they've been three big plays. Tough right there as the Trojans. 15 will, seconds remaining in the half when they when they uh, made that 60-yard pass, uh, making it 18 to three, and converting the two-point conversion makes it 20 to three at half. That is, that was a backbreaker right there. Yeah, it was as the Minneapolis Lions go in at halftime trailing. By a score of 20 to three, Minneapolis only score coming on a 27-yard field goal by Andrew Yoxel, um, as Minneapolis will uh, trail here going into halftime. As uh, Minneapolis, we we've got some uh, got some difficulties with uh, with our technicals. So, uh, what do we do in a situation like this, Dale? Well, we're going to uh, raise some ads, and uh, we'll just let the camera roll on. The whatever's going to happen on the field here, and we'll let, just let the audio go for those of you on uh, listening on the Internet. We're, we'll just leave you dry here for a while. You'll hear that there's stuff going on, and we'll be back. It's, uh, there's 14 and a half minutes left till second half begins, and we'll be back and discuss the game before that starts too. But let's give you a few more words from our sponsors, and then we'll take a break. At Robertson Monuments, they, they believe that community is everything. Minneapolis is a great town to live in, and Robertson Monument is happy to be a part of the community. Robertson Monument and Minneapolis Line Sports Booster try to make as many games as you can. If you're searching for the right insurance to fit your needs, look no further. American Family Insurance has been providing security and peace of mind for more than 80 years because they want to protect where it matters most. Call Scott Oshman of Minneapolis, your American family insurance agent. You know, I think I know that guy. Yeah. <laughs> your Minneapolis hometown hardware is always there when you need an appliance, paint, tools. Well, truthful, truthfully, the list just goes on and on and on. So the next time you need something, almost anything, go to hometown hardware Minneapolis. They probably got it. And here's my favorite, the hair stylum. The newest and most modern hair salon of Minneapolis will style your hair to give you the look you've always dreamed of. Or you might just want a haircut. The hair style will do that too. Land and Brandon welcome new customers. Call 392 4555. And since 1887, the Bennington State Bank has been your trusted hometown bank. For over 100 years, they've been interested in helping people achieve their financial goals. Let them help you. The Bennington State Bank, member FDIC, an equal housing lender. 
trust is a word that ever that is very important in this day and age, especially when it comes to insurance. The Davidson Agency in Delphos and Minneapolis has long been trusted to give you the best home, auto, farm, crop, life, and health insurance since 1982. Call Lyle Davidson at the Davidson Agency, your trusted choice. Well, that's, that was horrible, making you know, read it out about your competitors. I'll tell you, the law does a great job. Boy, that's, that's pretty bad when i got to read my competitors' uh, ad there, but the uh, law does do a great job. The Minneapolis Junior Senior High School linebackers are proud to continue their long-term support of the, these broadcasts for the Lion Games. Join us as we support student activities and the teachers of MJSHS. Go Lions, we're with you all the way. You know, last year, Lyle and I, uh, on a competing radio station <laughs> did a lot of the games together and boy we did have a lot of fun going back and forth at each other I'm and sure. uh, it was really kind of interesting uh, the different commentaries we had throughout the night you didn't uh, talk shop though did you i don't know no, no never <laughs> never once we we did make fun of each other occasionally no, but sure. uh, but it was all in fun also eagle communication home of ectv high speed internet 910 kna and 99kg is a proud sponsor of tonight's hometown coverage and you know that is great to have um, as Eagle Eagle comes in uh, they've done a great job of up upgrading our cable system in Minneapolis and uh, uh, for years uh, we've we had dish and we uh, have Eagle uh, Eagle Television and it is great to have um, it's also it's nice to have hopefully got all the bugs fixed out but uh, it's great to have on uh, a live audio stream on channel 8 yes, it is. It's just, they've made a tremendous commitment to the community and it's first of all in, in retooling all the cabling in the system and upgrading it to where great selection of channels and high speed wireless internet and, and uh, IP telephone, uh, you know, and uh, making these, as you say, the broadcasts available locally since KINA doesn't have the the strength of signal to, to get a game out on the radio waves so that people can hear them rather, other than from Salina. And so, uh, and that's, I know it's just the tip of the iceberg. Things There's going to be a lot more things to come exciting on ECTV. Last not last but not least for our sponsors, D and Body Shop. We don't have a copy for him, but uh, now if you get a ding on that favorite car of yours, that one you love, or that old beater, either way, and it needs fixed up, and and the insurance agent says, okay, well I guess we'll pay for it. Go see Dave. Oh, I like what he does. Yeah, and he works great with insurance companies, so uh, Dave does a great job for all your auto body needs, uh, as well as windshields. Dave uh, Dave does a lot of windshield repair, and uh, as well as replacements. So for all of your auto body needs, contact Dave Rupert at DNM Body Shop in Minneapolis, 785-392-2666. Got that number memorized. <laughs> all right, we're going to take a break, and we'll let you listen to the pep band. We'll be back and discuss the game a little bit. In the future. You're listening to 910kina.com uh, as well as Channel 8 Eagle Communication, Eagle TV there in Minneapolis, Kansas. We'll be back.
this show would not be possible without the great leadership of the seniors. This year's seniors are Sean Shields, Chad Johnson, Jake Matthews, Greg Peterson, Max McClure. Steve Fritz Field here, Southeast of Saline High School, Scott Osherman, Dave Rupert, and Dale Leach here as the uh, Minneapolis Lions trail at the halftime, 20-3 after a big play there at the end with 12 seconds left. Southeast of Saline scores on a, uh, a big pass play and uh, uh, really... Uh, uh, Really hurts right, right before going in the half. Unfortunate turn of events to give up those eight points with uh, 15 seconds remaining in the half at the, at the commencement of that play. We might review what happened in the first half to bring you up to speed. Uh, first of all, Southeast intercepts a uh, McCulloch pass, returns it for a touchdown, resulting in a 6-0 lead by Southeast. They were unable to convert on the two-point uh, conversion and so at that point they led uh, 6-0 and that's the way the first quarter ended with Southeast on top 6 to nothing. Uh, early in the second uh, period in the second quarter uh, Southeast converted a 53 yard pass uh, to uh, take a 12-0 lead and then uh, many uh, Minneapolis was able to get on the board with a three-point uh, field goal by Yoxel from 27 yards out and then with 15 seconds remaining in the uh, first half Southeast uncorks a 60-yard touchdown pass resulting in a, uh, a six-point touchdown and then converted the two-point PAT for, uh, to establish the lead that they hold currently, 20-3. And as we, we were talking here just a few minutes be, uh, during the half, and this is a little bit of, of what happened to us against Ellsworth. If you remember, with uh, under two minutes, Ellsworth was able to score late in the first half and was kind of a backbreaker. Uh, a lot of game to go, but that 20-3 lead is, is, uh, is significant. Yes, and it, and it could be a lot worse. Sure. I want to back up for just a second. It could be a lot worse because Southeast has seen first possession. They got it all the way down the five-yard line, first and goal. We stopped them on four straight plays. So it could be a lot worse. Minneapolis had done a great job of shutting them down there. Yeah. You know, we have, with the, as Dale said earlier, with the exception of a couple of running plays, we've done a pretty good job defensively. The front line has done a real good job of, of denying Southeast much of a running game. Uh, but... That uh, couple of pass, or intercepted pass, and and that big play right before half were were huge plays. Uh, I for Minneapolis now, uh, McCulloch has attempted 16 passes, completed five of those, for a total of 93 yards. He's thrown one interception. Uh, Mike, just talk here briefly about his intended receivers. Greer has uh, was uh, the primary receiver. Twice, uh, Macy was the is one for one for 15 yard or one reception for 15 yards. Weedle has two receptions, I believe. Let me look here. Weedle has one for 11, three receptions, one, one. one for 15. yeah, one for 47, yep. which is uh, 73 yards. And okay, three. All right. So, George has been the primary receiver twice with one 16-yard reception. And that's pretty much it. Weedle's 5 for 16, 93 yards passing. Now, I have not kept track of the, of the running yards. We've, we've had a couple of nice runs. We've, our running backs are running hard, just not a lot of room there. Let's talk about some other positive things that have happened this year in the passing game. Uh, some records have fallen. Uh, in the first game of the, the season, a new record was established for passing TDs in a career. Long time, 25-plus uh, year, more longer than that, record held by, by Ken Wilcox. Yeah, uh, you'll have to, you'll have to <laughs> 25 about this. years ago, Dale. You'll have to rise him about this. I uh, will see him in the body, body, but he had 28. He had 28 uh, touchdown passes in four seasons from 1961 to 64, and the Ellsworth game, Keegan got his 29th. Wilcox uh, had 28, 28 
career yeah. touchdown passes mm -hmm. from 61 to 64, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. now surpassed by uh, McCullough. McCullough. With how many? It's 29. 29. And Jamie Goeth is third with 26 in three seasons from 91 to 93. All also, right. uh, passing yardage now belongs to Keegan McCulloch. Um, he came into the season second to Jamie Goeth. Jamie had 3,069 yards. Keegan had 2,703. And, uh, of course, he has surpassed that 3,069 yards now in the first two games, I believe. So he is the new. Well, he's definitely over with 95 yards tonight. Lead, so. Leading re, uh, passer in Minneapolis history. Another uh, interesting point that we're can be talking about in years come. As I say, we've had two field goals this year out of uh, Andrew Yoxel. Uh, it was the first time we had a field goal since 19, or excuse me, 2001. Some of the other, uh, so the most field goals completed in a season. Prior to this year were seven by Aaron Hyatt. I was just going to say, it had to be higher. Seven, uh, second was four by Anton Hopkins. Well, where was the toe at? Where was the toe at? The in two that? was a, a PAT kicker. He wasn't so much field goal kicker. He wasn't fee it was field goal. He was no, a PAT yeah, guy. Yeah. Okay. Well, I see the toe yeah. here tonight. Yep. Yeah. So when you're talking field goals, okay, the names, the the names of Minneapolis <laughs> history are Aaron Hyer, Anton Hopkins, Kerry Dieter, and uh, Scott Grum Grumbaugh and Mark Frazier Mark had a 34-yarder against Beloit back in 82. Longest field goal that we can keep watching over the next four years is 48 yards Aaron by Aaron Meyer back in 1987. Against, Howard Coatney is the toe. toe. Yeah. Howard Coatney is the toe. Yes, he is, and he's here tonight. So Howard Coatney is. <laughs> we, we will talk about his, his PAT prowess some night. Minneapolis will kick to start here in the third quarter as uh, uh, some of the keys for the Lions guys in the second half of what they need to change uh, to get back in this ball game. A pass, our sharper passing and uh, break some of those runs for long ones. As Yoxel getting ready, the ball is down on the 40 as he comes up, kicks it, kick is up, and a nice kick will be fielded at the 10 and will be taken up about the 20. And he'll be taken down at about the 32-yard line by numerous Minneapolis players as number three for the Trojans, Braden Long, will bring it up to, to about the 32-yard line. The Trojans will start the ball 11.53 here in the third quarter as they start the second half with a lead, 20-3. As Benneke comes back. Benneke's uh, had, a, had a nice night tonight throwing as well as he's had some decent runs from scrimmage as well. So Benneke will bring his squad back the line of scrimmage. We've seen him in a shotgun most of the night. Uh, to the right, to the left, one in the backfield, which is Everhart. Minneapolis defense, this time they fake the handoff. Uh, Benneke keeps it, and he's out on the right-hand side before he's going to be taken down after a gain of about... 32 yards on the play. Wow, big play by Benneke is, uh, as he runs to the right-hand side, he is left-hand side. Big play right there. He is quick. Cody Ham was there on the Cody Ham in on the tackle. Haven't called his number yet tonight as he gets the tackle for the Lions. And wow, big play right there to start to start out here. Nearly about a 35-yard run by Benneke. Not what you want to see to start here in the second half as the Trojans come back to the line of scrimmage. To the right, to the left, one in the backfield, Everhart. As Benneke, shotgun, drops back to pass, throws across the middle. Nice job by Minneapolis as number 26 for the Lions. In on the tackle, which is uh, Cody Ham in on the tackle. As he gets the second tackle right there as Ham in on the play. Minneapolis... Uh, Excuse me, the Trojans pick up six on the play. We'll be, bring up a second down and four for the Trojans. This time they will send one to the left-hand side. Bunched in tight on the right are trips. This time Benneke will keep it himself, get to the outside, and, wow, fights through some tackles before he's finally taken down by Minneapolis number 57, Austin Crossan. Uh, I'll tell you guys, Benneke has been one tough, tough runner tonight. Uh, he's had some good passes. Running, running with some real determination right now. 
Trojans will pick up the first down and then some. Ball will be placed on about the 21 yard line, excuse me, the 16 yard line. We'll bring up a first and 10 from the 16. 10 34 left to go here in the third quarter. Once again, they bunch him in tight on the right hand side. Shock information for Beneke. Drops back, looks to pass, throws across, and throws it behind his receiver. Nice pressure by Minneapolis as Torres in on the pressure as well as number 54 for the Lions, which is Andy Griffith in with the pressure. And uh, Beneke that time had to get it off quick and throw it behind his receiver. So nice pressure by the Minneapolis defense. Well, Trojans will come back to the line of scrimmage here. As still waiting for the play call as Haxton runs into play. Um, has a couple different receivers that he runs in every time with a different play call from the sidelines. As this time he will send this time two to the right hand side. One in a, on a wing on the right. One in the backfield. One to the left. And Everhart's the, the back as he takes it. Gets it down to the 15 yard line before he's tackled well, by Minneapolis. The, a white shirt came up with the ball but the officials blew Everhart it dead. Austin Crossan, along with Minneapolis, Minneapolis in on the tackle was Austin Crossan, as uh, public address announcer announced from up here. Third down and eight on the play. 9.53 left to go here in the third quarter. Trojans in the red zone here. To the right. right. I'd like to see them be denied if possible. To the right-hand side, one to the left. As he fakes the handoff, throws it quickly, and... It is going to be taken out of bounds at the nine. It will be short of the first down. We'll bring up a fourth down and about two, I believe. Maybe about fourth down and a long two, perhaps. Had some hot sauce on that throw. I'm going to back up fourth down and three on that one. So Minneapolis on defense stops them in the first three plays here. We'll see what they can do on this one. It'd be a, uh, be a psychological lift for the Lions if they could deny Southeast here. We remember the Trojans marched down on their first possession in the first quarter, got down the five-yard line before the Minneapolis stopped them on four straight plays. This time they get it down to the 16. Minneapolis so far stopped them. Shotgun, and they've got an uh, uh, offensive line jumped on that one, I believe. We'll always think they should have. <laughs> I, I saw number 22 move, whether or not uh, the defense will see for sure, but no, they call a timeout. Um and not sure what the they call they got it. Way, got way off the flag. flag. So not sure what happened on that one. They waved the flag and uh, um, called timeout. I'm not sure what happened on that one. But uh, we're gonna we're gonna hear a word from our sponsors. Here. So uh, word from our sponsors. Dale? I better pick up the mic yeah, to do that. Probably help a little bit. The, the State Bank of Delphos and the Otter County Bank of Minneapolis are locally owned community banks which offer traditional accounts such as checking, savings, certificates of deposit, IRAs and loans, and online banking. But most important, they're committed to making your banking experience as easy and personal as possible. Remember, a member, FDIC, equal housing lender. There's nothing more important uh, nothing more important than our children. That's exactly why the Lions Den was established in Minneapolis, so they could get together in a clean and healthy environment to have fun. It's a great place to party, the Lions Den, downtown Minneapolis. Now, fourth down. Get another one in that Robertson Monuments. They believe the community is everything. Minneapolis is a great town to live in, and Robertson Monuments is happy to be a part of the community. Robertson, Monu Robertson Monument, a Minneapolis Lions sports booster. Try to make as many games as you can. Fourth down and three here, Dave, as the uh, Trojans come up. Minneapolis will uh, have a chance to shut them down and take the ball over right here as the Trojans will come back after the timeout as they will come to the line of scrimmage. They're going to send uh, trips to the right-hand side, to the left, empty backfield. Now, this has hurt us a couple times with Beneke running up the gut. They send one in motion, and they fake the handoff. And it's taken up, and Beneke's got the first down up to the five-yard line uh, before he's knocked backwards. He will have, wow, great spot. Gives it all the way up to the four-yard line, and that will be enough for the first down. We'll bring up a first and goal from the four. So uh, a nice spot there by, uh, by, the, by the official. Puts the ball on the four-yard line. Tough situation there when, when you can gain 
three and a half yards and get a first down, or if you gain uh, ten yards or a little less, you get a you get six points. So everything is kind of stacked in your favor in that situation, with the exception of the fourth down situation. Back to uh, two to the right, two to the left. Everhart, the halfback, Benneke in a shotgun. This time they fake the handoff, they throw up, and it's a touchdown. As they get it in the hands of number three for the Trojans, which is Braden Long as he gets the four-yard touchdown reception uh, to make the score 26-3 here with 9.07 left to go in the third quarter. Adam Klein there on defense. He just wasn't able to get the fingertips on the ball. It was thrown with some authority and stuck it in there, but he had a hand out there. He just couldn't quite get the fingers on the ball to deflect it. He's, he's done that a couple of times tonight very well, but uh, that was just a short, quick pass. Pretty tough to get a hand on it. They're going to go for the two-point conversion, and it's incomplete. No flag. No flag. So the yeah, two-point conversion is no good, so uh, Minneapolis stops them on that. 26-3 to here with 9.07 left to go here in the third quarter as the Trojans on their first possession march it down the field. Uh, mainly on one, uh, actually one big play for the Trojans. Got them down there quite a ways. Um, for the lines. If you're searching for the right insurance to fit your needs, look no further than American Family Insurance has been providing security and peace of mind for more than 80 years because they want to protect what matters most. Call Scott Osherman in Minneapolis, your American Family Insurance agent. You know, I like reading that one a little bit better than the other one I had to read for the Davidson Agency, but I, I don't mind reading one for Lyle as well. Uh, we'll we'll uh, abstain from another one to get ready to kick off. <laughs> so as we get ready for the kickoff, as uh, I want to say uh, hello once again to our listeners, uh, as well as as our families, as uh, Minneapolis trails right now 26 to three here in the third quarter. Thanks for listening on KN. Quick kick here. Yeah, they did that the first time. It's a little bit, a little odd. And yeah, eyes on the ground. Wow. I don't know if they got on that or not. A uh, lot of bodies flying in there. Pretty tentative on covering that ball. And Minneapolis does come up with it. So uh, a live ball there as it, uh, as it uh, just a quick little pooch kick, although, although it did go all the way down to the 23-yard line. So uh, they did that earlier and it went out of bounds. Uh, well, I, yeah, maybe. I don't, I don't remember if that was the case. Might, it might have been the case. But uh, I'm sure it's a deceptive, it's a deceptive situation where I guess they lull the receiving team into the idea that the ball's not coming when, in fact, it is on the way. So if you're not paying attention, you may wind up. Eye formation for the Lions as Moody has the ball, and he's taken out of bounds at the 26-yard line as picks up about four on the play. Moody's gimping. He's got that right ankle heavily taped, and at half he was exercising a little, trying to put a little pressure, a little speed on it, see what he had, but it, it has slowed him just slightly. 8.55 left to go here in the third quarter. Minneapolis will come back. They'll send Logan Wheel to the right-hand side. Two in the backfield in Moody as well as Torres to the left as they will send Argenbride in motion. Takes the handoff, gives to uh, Torres. Torres with the uh, very close to the first down. Um, if uh, if they spot it where the back ju or the Maybe line the judge coming in, it will be a first down, right and it is enough for the first down. Minneapolis, first down. nice job by the Lions to pick up a first down here. I'm I'm impressed with Torres. He's running hard tonight. So Lions will come back to the line of scrimmage here. To Keegan the, to the left hand side. Keegan is five of sixteen. In the first half, he has yet to pass in the second half. Once again, goes in motion. This time they hand it off to Argenbright. Argenbright gets it out on the corner a little bit before he's taken down. Big tackle there uh, before he gained him about four on the play. As Southeast did a good job of stringing that play out. They just kept sliding out and sliding out. Nobody out there to put a block on him. Argenbright couldn't get the corner, and and uh, got a short gain. Argenbright's got some great speed. If he could break, uh, turn that corner over there, he's got tremendous speed. Second and six. So, gets One around, just seven, couldn't quite bring it up. This time they'll send Argenbright and Greer on the right-hand side, Logan Weedle on the left, two in the backfield for the Lions. McCulloch under center. Once again, this time Argenbright in motion. This time they 
Um, wow, nice defense by the Trojans as they uh, faked a fake to. Uh, yeah, they, I look like they went to fake to Moody, gave to Torres on the backside, and uh, um, brings up a third down and seven here. Either the nose tackle or the left guard stayed home and put a good hit on him. I was able to blow the play up. Ball's on the 37-yard line, 26-3, Trojans on top. Two receivers to the right, one to the left. Eye formation for the Lions as the Trojan defense bunched in tight there. Nice little gap there, and it's in the hole, and Moody's got the first down. Great job by Minneapolis as a little draw play as Minneapolis does a delayed draw there, and they do a great job, and they get the first down. Now, one of the things I had... Uh, I, uh, Kenny Hendricks had mentioned to me before the game was he thought that that might be one thing that if we ran a few de delayed uh, draw play that we may have an advantage there, and that was a nice gain right there. Had a, had a nice hole, had a huge opening, number 20, give him credit, not a very big kid, put a big pop on him. High formation once again, two receivers on the right, one to the left, McCulloch under center. This time they hand off to Moody again. Moody will take it up to about the... 48-yard line, 48-49-yard uh, 40, not 49-yard of the Trojans. Gain of about six on the play. Nice job by the Lions as they will pick up nice yardage on first down. We'll bring up a second down. Second down and, yeah, I'd take that about five. It, uh, about any time, any time that you can be second and five, that's, that's not a bad situation to find yourself in. Nice run. High formation once again for the Lions. Two receivers to the right. This time he drops back, fakes the handoff. He is going to look to pass. The coach flushed out of the pocket, throws up, and has a receiver. Nice job. And he stays with it. I'll tell you, Keegan McCulloch did a great job of being flushed out and not losing his eye on a receiver. 13-yard reception by Argenbright. Nice job by McCulloch there. Great catch by Argenbright. Earlier we saw McCoy be flushed out and then just either tuck it and run, but that time he did a nice job of keeping his eye down the field and found uh, found Casey Argenbright open for a nice, like you said, 13-yard gain. Eye formation, two receivers to the right-hand side, one to the left for the Lions. McCulloch under center. This time they pitch to Moody. Moody breaks a tackle, still on his feet, take it down to about the 31-yard line before he's tackled by number 20 for the Trojans, which is Leighton Everhart as he gets in on the tackle. Uh, we've called his number a few times tonight. You know, I'm liking this balanced attack here. Nice, a nice run spotted with a, with a pass. This is the kind of offense that keeps a defense uh, honest. When you can pop off five yards on a nice crisp run, people have to stay home. You can't overcommit to the pass. I formation once again for the Lions. Torres, the fullback. This time they give it to Torres, and Torres will take it up for a gain of about uh, and uh, about four on the play. Nice yeah, job by Torres. Torres Should three. be short by about three. a yard. Uh, may not, maybe, uh, they may measure this. Nice yeah, job by Torres, a very quick handoff. And Torres has got some great speed coming up. Looks good. Yeah. Nice crisp runs tonight. Ball is placed on the 27-yard line of the Trojans. As we said, there was no, almost no running game last week, so this is a refreshing change. Earlier in the season, I heard some reference to as to his nickname, but I can't remember what it was. Do you, do you remember hearing it? Was it Poo? Or? First down. First down. For I, the I, I can't I, remember. I, I, I don't know. First down for the Lions. Minneapolis will get the first down right there. I'm probably way off, so don't, don't take that as gospel. I, I, I'm not going to get in this one because I don't want to get any phone calls. As, as the, uh, Good decision. That's the coward's way out for you. <laughs> as the Lions, I'm too accessible, guys. As the Lions come out the line of scrimmage, I formation, two receives to the right, McCulloch under center. As Argon right on the left-hand side. As they uh, hand off to Moody. And got a flag there. I don't know if there's going to be a lot of flags. Or uh, wow, I'm not sure. A lot of flags thrown in there. I'm not sure if there was, a, like you said, I'm not sure what it was. We'll see what it's it is. It was fairly, but it was a uh, face mask. But fairly convincing. They look like they're going to walk it, it off like against us. Go against us, yeah. Whatever it would be. Call. Oh, face mask. face mask. Against mask. Oh, I... <laughs> 
I'm amazed because I, I was sitting there thinking, now those referees are all lined up to start walking off yards against us. I, <laughs> 15 yards. They had me fooled. All right, let's turn around and go that way then. <laughs> I'm waiting for them to turn around there. They start walking the other direction. That was a big penalty. And it, well, now five yards. Yard. So I thought that wasn't an incidental. No, it's uh, unless. <laughs> So uh, five yard told, face mask. I was told by coach that it's gone. The incidental's gone. Well, all 15. May be, well, I don't know, but that was five. Two receivers are right. I formation for the Lions. First and five. As McCulloch under center. This time he drops back. He's going to pass. That's it's Arden Bright. Arden Bright. He's got it. Oh, bounces out of his hands as he falls to the ground. Nice try by Arden Bright. Thought he had that one there. He had it in his hands and comes down and hits the ground hard. Nice little touch there. Uh, great try by Casey Argenbright. Wow. So Casey was well, six, like six for 17 for McCulloch so far tonight with 106 yards passing. Casey's going to check out. Grayson George is going to check in. Great effort by Casey Argenbright right there as he went up in the air and just couldn't quite come down with it. Actually, he caught it. The ground caused the, the uh, loss of the ball. Or that's the way I saw it. I thought he caught it, but... When he hit the ground, he just couldn't keep a handle on it. Torres with the ball as he lumbers forward to about the 15-yard line. Should be enough once again for the first down, depending on the spot. As nice job by Torres, and it is a first down. I like to see that. That keeps the uh, defense honest. They're going to have to figure out how to deal with him. That just sets up the passing game. First and, first and 10 ball on about the... 16-yard line as they will come back to the line of scrimmage. Two receivers to the right-hand side, one to the left. Eye formation once again, Torres and Moody. Torres the fullback, Moody the halfback. McCulloch with the snap, gives it to Moody. Moody um, still on his feet, takes it down to about the 13-yard line, uh, maybe the 12, as nice positive four or five-yard gain on the play by by number 44, that's Moody, Kyler, Kyler Moody. And, and he's, again, he has his right ankle heavily taped, and he's he's gimping a little on that ankle. He's fighting hard, and he's going to bring him out. As you can see, he's not comfortable. Ty Ham will come in as Moody will come out. Ty Ham, a uh, sophomore, checking in for the Lions. As in the backfield will be, in the fullback will be, Torres, halfback will be Ty Ham. This time they will hand off to Torres, and Torres ball is on the ground. No. Um, Southie Sling quickly got the tackle on there. Got up like that. I thought they had the ball, but uh, uh, short gain on the play. Um, we'll take it down to about the 11-yard line. We'll bring it third and five. So, but may have us in the red zone here. We we could get some points. It'd be much needed. Plenty of time remains, but we need to start doing something with it with 2.23 remaining in the third quarter. Minneapolis 3, Southeast 26. Macy comes out, or excuse me, Macy comes in and Moody comes out, and this time they will put Macy in motion. McCulloch will split and roll to the right-hand side, looks to pass, throws it up, has a receiver in the end zone, touchdown. Right. Nice job by the Minneapolis Lions. yard pass. As he gets Casey Arden right in the end zone for the first time tonight as the Lions get a touchdown there. Nice job by the Minneapolis Lions, 26-9 with 2.03 left to go here in the third quarter. Nice to see Minneapolis come down and get a nice, nice drive there on their first possession in the second half. So it looks like they're going uh, to go uh, for two here. McCulloch is two for three in the second half with a reception by Argenbright of 13 yards and then that 11-yard TD pass. Uh, we have 117 yards passing so far in the game. But Macy the halfback, Torres the fullback. May, uh, they're going to roll out the right-hand side. They're going to pass across the middle, and two-point conversion is good, and he's got it. That is our two. Nice job. Yeah, who is that, 11? Is that Dusty Greer? Dusty Greer. Dusty, Greer. Dusty, Greer. Dusty Greer. Greer. Nice job by the Minneapolis Lions. 26-11 to 11 as they go for the two-point conversion. Eight points on the board right there as the Lions bring it to within 15, 26 to, I can't even count, 20, yeah, 15, 26 to 11. As we, uh, as security and peace of mind 
for more than 80 years because they want to protect what matters most. Call Scott Oshman in Minneapolis, your American Family Insurance agent. Also, we don't have the script written, but I want to are, say... Are you reading your advertising I, too I, much? Yes, I probably am. But I want to say also, uh, we don't have it written, but the DNM Body Shop, a great place in Minneapolis uh, to get your car fixed. Uh, Dave does a great job with all your body needs. Also, your windshield repairs as well as windshield replacements. Stop and see Dave at 785 392 2666 for all your repair needs. Ball's kicked back deep to the Trojans as he picks it up, and then it's going to be taken down. Nice job by Minneapolis as they kind of try to sneak in there on that. Uh, Dylan like Carson with the final stuff. 82. Matt, Matt Mortimer tried to get in a little wedge there, yeah. and then looked like a bolt boy offensive play from last year. Or uh, just kind of student body right, student body left. Dave does pretty good tape jobs, too. Pretty good tape jobs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> his, his, uh, Eleanor came in, and we had to we had to do a little duct tape for her. <laughs> well, once again, we find that all we kinds do, of We do whatever it takes, Scott. <laughs> whatever it takes. And, uh, and also, Dave does a great job of working with insurance companies as well as insurance agents. Thank you, Dave. You, you're welcome. My pleasure. I formation, excuse me, shotgun formation. They fake the handoff, and the quarterback. There we go. That's what we like. Nice job by Minneapolis in on the tackle. I believe was Austin Crossan, and Crossan did a great job of getting in there Charlie and getting a big hit. So Charlie Lynn, I believe, was in on the two. There we go. Good job, Charlie. Minneapolis does a great job on that one to cause a loss of three on the play, as the ball will be uh, is now on the 18-yard line. A minute 30 remains in the third quarter. Maybe the 17. 26 to 11, Trojans on top. Minneapolis defense would be great to shut them down here with no positive gain here. As they'll send two to the right, two to the left. Shock information once again. This time they fake the handoff. They pass it up. Wow. Wide open, but no way. Nice job. Thank you. As the ball has as Cody Ham was beaten on the play, but uh, luckily the the Ball went to the opposite shoulder, and the receiver couldn't couldn't pull it in. It was laid right on the money. He just didn't catch it. So break right there for the Lions. Had he caught that, it would have been see you later. Yeah, it would have been a tough one right there. As Minneapolis will come back on defense here, third down and thirteen. Trojans this time will go trips to the right, two to the left, empty backfield for Benicky. And they'll send one in motion. They fake the handoff. Benicky takes it up Take the out. cut again. And nice job by Minneapolis to get him there as number 57, Austin Cross, and number 66, uh, Jacob Klein, and number 82 in on the tackle, which is Dylan Crossan. Nice job by the Minneapolis Lions. That, that time wrapping him up. He's elusive. He's quick. Very quick. And, and he's got a great footwork as well. And looks like they will uh, punt the ball as Benicky will stand back at about his own 11-yard uh, line. Back deep will be Argenbright and Macy. You know, the thing about this, the ball's back in our hands. And, uh, and one thing about a passing offense is you can score with one play. And the ball rolls down to about the 34-yard line. So Minneapolis will take over at the 34. Good and field position. You have to like that. As we said, uh, uh, the offensive, the offense that we have is a is a big play offense. We could we could score on any given play, and that would change the complexion of this game. Minneapolis uh, is down 26 to 11, with 20 seconds remaining in the third quarter. So plenty of time if Minneapolis can make something happen here. Great to have a quick strike here in the third quarter like they did to us in the second quarter, the end of the half. It'd be great to have a quick strike right here. 26 to 11, shock information from McCulloch. Trips to the right, one to the left. One in the backfield, which is Ham. Drops back to pass, and he's flushed out of the pocket. He's going to roll, and he's going to go out of bounds and hit hard as he goes out of bounds at the 35-yard line by number three, Braden Long as Long uh, puts a number on him right there at the 35-yard line. McCulloch does a nice job of sticking right in there. Short gain, but he got out of bounds. Got out of bounds, so stop the clock here. Second down and nine. McCulloch still looking for the play call. As he'll bring it, come back the line of scrimmage here. 
Two of three passing in the second half. Doing a lot of time in the huddle here. Seven of 18 for the game. Cullix, 117 <clears throat> yards passing. Cullix gonna have to quickly get it off here. And he does. And he gives the ball up to, to uh, Torres, and Torres is gonna have the first down. Nice job by Torres as he gets it up to the 45 yard line. Great run by number 42, Nick Torres, as he gets the first down. I'm, I'm just very pleased about this running attack that we're able to put together. So that should end the uh, third quarter here. It won't have far to move the change, chains. So in fact, they can yeah. leave, them, leave them right where they're at. Oh, they're at yeah. almost, can't they? Not quite, 45, so move it 10 yards, but that's still and just to change them in for end, I guess. Minneapolis will start the fourth quarter, trailing 26 to 11 with the ball on their own 45. And word from our sponsors, Dale. Your Minneapolis hometown hardware is always there when you need an appliance, paint, tools. Well, truthfully, the list just goes on and on and on. So the next time you need something, almost anything, go to hometown hardware in Minneapolis. They probably got it. Also, the Hair Asylum, the newest and most modern hair salon in Minneapolis, will style your hair to give you the look, that look that you always dreamed of, or you might just want a haircut. The Hair Asylum will do that too. Lynn and Brandon, welcome new customers. Call 392-4555. And uh, Dale, I'm curious, is that where you go? <laughs> Since 1887, the Bennington State Bank has been your trusted hometown bank for over 100 years. They've been interested in helping people achieve their financial goals. Let them help you, the Bennington State Bank. Remember FDIC, an equal housing lender. They have my picture on the wall for advertising purposes. Great job they do. <laughs> Better not say those things anymore. Yeah. People go there. Yeah. Well. <laughs> Excuse me as I'm a little choked up here. Shock information for McCulloch. Trips to the right-hand side, first and 10, one in the backfield, and he drops back and has some pressure, and he's going to be flushed out, throws it up, has look, uh, Grayson George at the 30, cuts it back in, cuts it back again, still on his feet up to 20. Great job by Grayson George as he takes it up to the 20-yard line, a 35-yard completion by uh, excuse me, George, Grayson by George, 35 yards. Nice job. Again, patience by Keegan there. Just You can see lots of running room available for uh, him. But yeah. he, he did stayed, the stayed in the pocket. Found yep. the open receiver. Nice job. Let her go. Nice job. We, and I would say we've seen a little bit of adjustments from the first half to the second half from McCulloch. Trips to the left-hand side, shotgun formation. Torres in the backfield. This time they throw it up. And oh, way long. A um, lot of a lot of pressure there, and uh, Argenbrights are uh, talking with the official as they tried to tried to run him out of bounds. As uh, Braden Long taunting him a little bit coming back. Well, Argenbright got pushed out of bounds. He was wanting a pass interference, but I think he was pushed out of bounds before the ball was let go. So, second down and ten, 11:31. A little confusion here. Let's see, student body right, not student body left. As this time they get everyone set. Shotgun once again. Oh, very close. No call there. McCulloch rolls the left hand side. Gonna try to duck and run. And still on his feet. Still running. Nice, nice game. Job. Gonna be close to the first down. Probably slightly short. Gets it uh, to about the 11 yard line. Minneapolis carry. in the red zone again. Conversion would be big. Third down and one for the Lions as this time they send once again trips to the right hand side and one to the left. Southeast leads by 15 here. Once again McCulloch with the call, drops back, this time hands off to Torres. Torres has got the first down as he takes it up to about the seven yard line. Nice job by Nick Torres. Nick has really ran the ball hard tonight. Done a great job. Minneapolis's uh, offense has really established itself here. I, I just, I just feel real positive about what we're seeing. A good balanced attack by Minneapolis. And looks like we've got uh, an equipment. Uh, Southeast of Saline uh, players got uh, malfunction with his helmet. So helmet issues. So I think we're gonna. Uh, once again, uh, well, they're still working on that. We'll go ahead and keep it here. But um, 
Looks like they'll have yeah. shock information for lines when they come back. They're still working on that, but I don't think we have time to read a commercial, but we'll go ahead and keep it here now. So, uh, first and goal, ball on the seven-yard line. Uh, great opportunity for the Lions to uh, <laughs> great opportunity for the Lions to uh, perhaps perhaps get a score here. It'd be big to get six. Uh, obviously, we're within field goal range, but but six would be what you're looking for. And going to be off the grass, I believe. Yep. Um, short hop into Dusty Greer, but uh, incomplete. So we'll bring up a second down and seven as they tried to little swing out to the left-hand side. Incomplete pass. Quick huddle here as Minneapolis comes back to the line of scrimmage. Two to the left, two to the right. Torres in the backfield. Shack information. McCoy drops back. Going to... Uh, fakes the throw, run with it, still on his feet before he's knocked down. Going to be probably forward progress to somewhere around the five, which is going to be a little short of four-yard gain. On the tackle. So, the as that will bring up a third down and goal from about the six-yard line. 10-11 here, left to go in the fourth quarter. To the right, to the left. This time, Logan Weedle on the left-hand side with Grayson George. This time they hand off to Torres. Torres, wow, nothing there as the Southeast of Saline defense did a great job of shutting them down there on fourth down. Uh, big, or excuse me, on third down. They'll bring up a fourth down. And Minneapolis Lions, I believe, yeah, the Lions are going to call a timeout. So, uh, <laughs> well, at least you have a lead read that one. Trust, <laughs> trust is a word that is very important in this day and age, especially when it comes to insurance. The Davidson Agency in Delphi, so Minneapolis has long been trusted to give you the best home, auto, farm, crop, life, and health insurance since 1982. Call Al Davidson at the Davidson Agency. Your trusted choice. I, I just didn't want to screw the commercial up. So, <laughs> The Minneapolis Junior Senior High, High School linebackers are proud to continue the long-term support of the broadcast to these Lions games. Join us as we support student activities and the teachers at MG, MJSHS Minneapolis. Go Lions. We're with you all the way. And Eagle Communications, home of ECTV, High Speed Internet, 910KINA and 99KG. Proud sponsor of tonight's hometown coverage. Fourth and goal here, guys. As the Lions, 9:45 left to go in the ball game. Trips to the left hand we're side. Not gonna, we're not going to take the chip shot. We're going to go for six. Trips to the left, and McCulloch is going to roll to the left. Has some pressure there, and they're, they're, they're going to be holding. Yeah, sure and was complete. So, and uh, they'll. There will be a holding call, so sure uh, was. They'll decline that one. So, yeah, they'll decline it, and the uh, Trojans will take the ball over on the five-yard line. So, Minneapolis had a chance right there to get a to get a score, and they did a nice job of driving the ball down, uh, but were shut down on the defensive side by the Trojans. 26 to 11, 9.36 left to go in the ball game. Trojans had the ball on their own five yard line. As Minneapolis, excuse me, as the Trojans bring a play call in. As they'll come back to the line of scrimmage here, this time they'll send uh, trips in tight on the right hand side, one in the backfield, shock information. And uh, the quarterback keeps it himself once again on the outside, and a big seam right there, and and the quarterback is gone. 95-yard touchdown run, guys! Wow, that is that is a backbreaker right there. 95-yard touchdown run by Benicky, and we've seen that a couple times tonight as Benicky goes up the gut, and then they get a seal. The, the wide receiver had a tremendous block on Argenbright right there and, and just sealed him up, and Benicky was gone. Wow. Big play right there. As well, you know, there's a hole there that most people back could go through, and, and when you put quickness like he's got with it, boy, it's gone. Yeah, yeah, and Benicky well, that, turned, that turned things around in a big hurry. As the Trojans will go for a two-point conversion here. Uh, trips on the right-hand side, one in the backfield. 
Beneke drops back to pass, throws way off, way off. No communication there. As, as he didn't even, he just threw the ball, didn't even look as the receiver went in and he threw out. So uh, two point conversions, no good, but the damage is done right there on a 95 yard run by number seven, Brian Beneke with a big touchdown run right there um, to make the score 32 to 11 here with uh, 9.22 left to go in the ballgame. Time grows short. Bennett Autoplex supports the Minneapolis Lions. At Bennett Autoplex, you'll find a small town family atmosphere with great prices on new and used cars. New vehicles including Chevrolet, Pontiacs, GMC, Buicks, and Jeep. Serving their customers since 1957. Bennett Autoplex, Minneapolis and Salina. I'll tell you guys, it's been a, it's been, uh, they've had some big plays tonight. Uh, they've not been, uh, their long sustaining drives, they've only had one that they scored on a long sustaining drive. The rest of them have been big plays. Yes, that's true. Well, and you'd have to count in those big plays the fact that they denied us down here when we were knocking on the door. Now that's a great kick picked up by Argon Bright at the 8, and he'll bring it up on the right-hand side, and he'll be uh, taken out of bounds at about the 22. Wow. Nice return to get that outside of the 20-yard line. Knocked down by number 30, Cody Blaha. As Minneapolis will start the ball with the ball on about the 20-yard line to start here. And 9-14 left to go in the ball game. Trojans in control here, 32 to 11. First and 10 for Minneapolis on the 21. As McCulloch will bring his squad back to the line of scrimmage, Grayson George will. And Casey Argham right to the left. Uh, Logan Weedle and uh, Dusty Greer on the right. <clears throat> Shotgun formation. And he's flushed out of the pocket once again. And is going to have to get rid of it. Now, still on his feet. Wow. Oh, uh -oh. <laughs> slips down, but nice job. Uh, loses five on the play, but uh, it could have easily lost 20 on there, 10 on the play. Nice job by Keegan to to keep moving on that one. Injured player for the Trojans, number 66, uh, Tyler Harrington, a senior, uh, limping off the field as Harrington was back deep trying to uh, trying to get uh, in on the tackle. Just under seven minutes remain in the game. Southeast leads 32 to 11. <clears throat> Shock information from McCulloch, trips to the right, one to the left, one in the backfield. As he'll roll the right-hand side throw. Wow, nice job, Grayson George. Grayson George gets it. I thought that was going to be a pick for a second as it went right over the top of Cole Van Blericon into Grayson George's hands as the uh, about a 15-yard pass play. If he hadn't put the required height on it, it would have been a pick. <laughs> so from our vantage point up here, it looked like uh, Van Blericon was going to, going to have a pick. 167 yards passing from McCulloch tonight. So far. You know, but you talked about something, and, and that's been nice to see some running. And we keep, kept track of the running, but it's been nice to see some run. A much more balanced attack. So, and official timeout on the field. They're, I think they're going to measure this one. Um, maybe not. Nope. I'm not sure why they had official timeout, but they... Blew the whistle. Uh, <laughs> Looks like uh, maybe Haxton need to get a new player in. <laughs> so shock information this time. They hand it off to Torres. And Torres, um, I, I believe, will have forward progress for the first down uh, before he's knocked back. It should be enough for the first down. So, yep, it is. Nice job by Nick Torres. Nick's, Nick's been a workhorse tonight. It has been a great asset to have both Torres and Moody back tonight. Yes, it has, and we we suspected it would be. But I, th I think maybe I expected more on defense than offense, but I, I have to think that really it's been the offense that's benefited yeah. from their return more yeah. than the defense. Well, we've, we've had a run game, and we have not we did not have a run game in week two, so uh, it's been nice. Trips to the left-hand side, McCulloch in the backfield. Uh, excuse me. Oop. And a shotgun in the back. Uh, nothing as he tries to go to Dusty Greer as incomplete pass. We'll bring up a second down and 10. Greer lost his footing, or I, I, I wasn't watching him as a receiver. I'm not sure he, he 
kind of acted like possibly thought there might be some interference there. So somebody may have tripped him up, uh, but he was on the ground as the ball was delivered. So no reception. Fairly clean second half. Uh, we've seen the yellow hanky a few times, <clears throat> but not a lot here in the second half. Trips to the left-hand side, one in the backfields. Torres, shotgun for McCulloch. Low snap, hands it off to Torres. Torres with the run, lumbers up to about the 38-yard line before he's taken down. Nicholas nice job by Nick Torres. Everhart with the tackle. Um, as that will bring up a third down and about seven. Brings up third and seven. Trips to the right-hand side, one to the left. That's Argham right. <clears throat> Grayson George, Logan Weedle, and Dusty Greer on the right. And McCulloch rolls the right-hand side, throws it up to uh, to no, no, no reception pass. Tried to get it to Casey Argham right, and they said it's incomplete. So bring up a fourth down. Seven thirty left to go here, and uh, I'm not sure what they're going to do here. We may see. McCulloch staying in there regardless here. We'll see what uh, what the play call is. Once again, though, this time they'll send trips to the left-hand side. Torres right next to him, the, the halfback. Drops back to pass and throws it up to Got Grayson George. Nice job. First down, great catch by Grayson George as he gets the first down. Grayson looked to see how many yards he had to have and ran the right route. About an eight-yard pass. So many times we see that uh, a receiver will, will run a short route and, and get a great catch. But just come up, up short. Yards. But Grayson had a great route there and ran it and got a great catch. Good pass by McCulloch. First down, Lions keeps the drive live on fourth down. McCulloch this time airs it out. Just over the top of Casey Argham, right? Now, we've not been able to connect on that tonight. We've had a couple opportunities where the receivers gotten some separation on the defense, but have not been able to dial it in. So, who was the intended receiver there? Um, Casey Argham was okay. the intended receiver. As they went deep to Argham right on the left hand side. That is uh, 10 for 24 so far, 175 yards. Trips to the right. Empty. Uh, McCulloch flushed out of pocket. He's got some pressure. And just, oh, wow. Just over the top as Grayson George gets absolutely leveled in the air. And he gets right back up. Great job, Grayson George, as <clears throat> as he went up in the air. And uh, I know it's legal, but uh, there was no way he could have caught that. And the defender knew it. And that was, a, in my opinion, a little bit of a cheap shot. But. Uh, that's Cheap my opinion. Shot. <laughs> my opinion on that. So, second, uh, third down and ten. Uh, one in the backfield. That's the way they're right. coached. <laughs> Trips to the right. Low snap. McCulloch keeps it. He's going to run it, and he's going to he's going to have the first, first down. down. Great job by McCulloch, and great job as he is going to get the first. It down. appeared to be right all the way. I, he he didn't look for a receiver very long. Yeah, no, he did. Nice job by McCulloch as he picks up a 10-yard run gain there. Uh, ran about 15 yards from the shotgun, but great job by McCulloch. First and 10 for the Lions. Seven minutes left to go here in the ball game. 32 to 11. Trojans in control this time. They will uh, trips to the left, one to the right. Shotgun formation for the Lions. As McCulloch with the snap, low snap, rolls to the right-hand side, drops back, throws towards Casey Argham right, and incomplete pass. Now, yeah, I, I'll ask a question here, guys. Um, we've seen this a couple times where, where they've gone trips to the one side, or they've gone one to the right-hand side. This time they went trips to the left, and, and they threw to the right. Um, design on that? Just trying to pass it. Change it up. Back to trips on the right hand side. And this time they hit. Oh, wow. Big hit by, <clears throat> by, uh, by, uh, <laughs> by Southeast of Sleen, number three, Braden Long, as he gets in and gets I didn't, the, I didn't the see the it. There was some there. kind of a blitz. Uh, it it might have been. I, I, I missed it. Uh, he, he had a clean shot. He so, pulled right through there. He was he was going all the way, and, and nobody nobody picked him up. Yeah, and Minneapolis got an injured player on the ground, and I I believe that's Torres. Yes, it is. And, and he was hit hard. 
And the problem gets to be with those concussions, uh, you know, you, you become susceptible to those. And I have no idea what the problem is. Maybe he's just got the wind knocked out of him. But I know that uh, there seems to be a pattern with those con concussions. Once you, once you get those, it just becomes easier and easier to get them. Kind of like heat stroke. The, doc the doctor is on the field. Yeah, Dr. Yoxler gets out there very quickly, as, as well as the coaches come out very quickly uh, to, uh, to check on him. As, as, nice he's job. Up. He's, he's up. up. Nice job. Got the breath knocked out of him, apparently. Yeah. That's good. So just so. keep your bad news to yourself, Dave. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> hey. We'll bring up a third down and 13 here. On yes. the injury, he's required to go out. And Adam uh, Adam Klein comes in. So, interesting. Adam Klein comes in. Uh, Certainly tough enough. The halfback trips to the right-hand side. This time McCulloch will drop back. Klein gets a block. Throws it up. That's a man. George at the 35. Knocked out of bounds at about the... 33-yard line should be enough for the first down. Nice job by Grayson George. A 13, 14-yard pass. Gonna, yeah, I'm going to call it 15 yards, but well, 14 maybe. Enough for the first down. Great job uh, by the Lions. Great job. Great pass to Grayson George. First down, Minneapolis. Trips to the left-hand side, one to the right. Klein in the backfield with McCulloch. McCulloch goes in the air, has... Uh, goes towards Grayson George, and it's nicely defended by number 11. Jordan Huggins gets uh, a hand on that and knocks it loose for the Trojans. 6.05 left to go here in the ballgame. 32-11. Trojans on top. This time the Trojan uh, Lions will send, once again, trips to the left-hand side, one to the right. Klein in the backfield with McCulloch. McCulloch drops back, throws it up, tries to get it to Logan Weedle, and just out of his reach, incompletion, brings up a third down and 10 for the Lions. 11 for 21 passing with 189 yards on the evening. Weedle, the intended receiver. As the Lions will come back once again, trips to the left-hand side, one to the right, Klein in the backfield. As as McCulloch is going to be, uh oh, I'm not yeah, sure if it's going to be holding or a face mask. Uh, I believe number 57 for the Lions is going to get called for the hold, Austin Cross, and we'll know for sure here. But yeah, holding, yeah, holding on the Lions. Well, back that up 10 yards, I believe. Uh, they may decline it. It would bring up a fourth down and 10, or a third down and 20. And it looks like they're going to decline it, so that will bring up a fourth down, and, and not 10, but fourth down and 12, because it's a spot foul, loss of two on the play. And we'll bring up fourth down here for the Lions. 5.55 left to go here in the ball game. <clears throat> two to the right, two to the left. McCulloch. Pointing out some things as he drops back, and he will throw the pass up. Oh, 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 oh wow. that would have been quite a catch. Yeah, nice try by Casey Argenbright, and incomplete pass. Would have been very close to a first down, but uh, that's going to turn the ball back over to the Trojans on downs. The ball was thrown a little bit low. Argenbright went down to get it, lost his footing, wound up laying on his back, but tipped the ball up, and it, and when, as he was looking up at the sky, the ball fell down right on his right on his chest, and he just wasn't able to get the handle on it. Would have been a great catch. So Trojans will come in as uh, they will come back to the line of scrimmage here, and they'll send. Two to the right, two to the left, one in the backfield for Beneke, shock information. And, and this time, Beneke uh, hands it off to Everhart, and Everhart is taken down at the line of scrimmage. Nice job by the line of defense. Everhart on the carry. Was so, on the tackle. Good job. Well, again, Crossing. Minneapolis has a nice, a, a nice series on offense. Uh, ground down some yards, 
showed a good balanced attack, just wasn't able to come away with the points, but you, you still feel like that's kind of a positive development that they're having such a balanced game. You know, uh, it, uh, Dale and I talked about this on the drive over. This is this is no slouch league. It's it's tough, and you got some good competition. Um, and nice job by Minneapolis as the Lions get in the backfield. Number 54 for the Lions, Andy Griffith. Nice job of getting in Benicky's face. Well, you know, let him know that you're around. Yep. You know, this that's the, the play down here against against George where he jumps up and the guy puts a little pop on him. Hey, I'm I'm just reminding you that I'm out here with you, guy. And that's what we need to do, and that's what we did do there. Uh, Andy Griffith put a little pop on the quarterback, says, you know what? I'm still here. Third down and ten for the Trojans. Just under five minutes left to go in the ball game. Trips to the right-hand side. To the left, empty backfield for Benneke. This has hurt us in the back uh, a couple times tonight. They send one in motion. Uh, oh, falls on the ground. And it's picked up quickly by Benneke. And that will bring up a fourth down. Loss of two on the play. Wow. Uh, big one right there. So, Haxton looking to see uh, what to do here. As... They will come back up. I, well, I, have this, I don't believe they're going to. I believe they may go for it here. That just. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's, that's interesting. 429, they may just let the clock run down and punt the ball or call, call timeout, but that's interesting. I believe they're going to call timeout here. Yep, they call timeout, so. So the Trojans call a timeout uh, to uh, bring the clock down and uh, I guess make a decision on whether or not they're going to punt or not. So I would assume they're going to punt. I, I think they had no intentions to, of running a play there, so they just left their offense out. But we'll see. So we're from our sponsors, Dale. Minneapolis is a dynamic and growing community. The Minneapolis Chamber of Commerce support of the Minneapolis Lion High School program. Sports programming is just a small part of what they do. Be a chamber member. Come and visit for, come for a visit and stay for a lifetime. Well, I'll tell you, I don't know if I can do this one as good as you, but I'm going to try. It's fast, it's furious, and it's fun. The Minneapolis Raceway. Minneapolis Raceway has brought you exciting races to Central Candace and will continue this tradition. This fast track will give you and your family some of the most exciting races ever seen. Go Lions. Last weekend for races, I believe, at Minneapolis Raceway, Saturday and Sunday. Do you know what times the races start? It's a shootout. 4 o'clock on Saturday, 5 o'clock on Sunday. So come on out to the Minneapolis Raceway and enjoy some great races. As Benneke will stand at his own 20 to punt the ball. Back will be uh, Macy and Argenbright. Benneke's had some decent punts tonight and, and has another one. Uh, this one will bounce and will roll down to about the 22-yard line as Minneapolis will have the ball here with 4.06 left to go in the ballgame. You know, one of the things, you know, I, I don't want to go back and, and talk about last year's team for it, but I'm going to mention some things from the standpoint that on kickoff returns, and, and, and Connor Macy and Argenbright, both sophomores, but uh, you, last year we, we had some, the guys were uh, sometimes too daring. Sometimes yeah. came up and, and <laughs> took some Heart attack kids that... Uh, uh, that yeah, that they, were the players, they were mature players. They were mature players. They... You know, they could handle themselves yeah, back there. It, 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 most teams didn't, wouldn't have the opportunity to have that kind of experience or athleticism that we had back there last year. And as time goes, you uh, you just see these kids maturing. And, and speed. Yeah. 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 And, and it's yeah. exciting to see. You know, we are young guys, and it's fun to see because there's a maturing that goes on in every single game. Absolutely. And, and we've seen it. It's trips to the left-hand side, and McCulloch's in trouble, but he gets it off and gets it <laughs> in the hands. Uh, nice job. That was a nice throw and a nice reception by Weedle in traffic. 
11 yard reception uh, maybe maybe 10 we'll see if it's uh, first down so 10 yard reception nice job uh, nice job by McCulloch to stay in the pocket um, felt the presence of them coming up from the backside um, and I'm going to call that 11 just so that my figures come out to be 200 yards passing <laughs> <laughs> to the right, to the left, one in the backfield, and that's Klein. And the ball there it is. Oh, uh -oh. and that one's picked off. So picked off um, by number 11 and is tackled there. So interception by number 11, which is Jordan Huggins uh, Jr. Gets the interception and brings it back to the Minneapolis 36-yard line. So 3.30 left to go in this ball game as uh, Keegan throws... Uh, his second pick of the night. Yeah, the first pick was his third pass of the evening. As this time they will send, uh, uh, Benneke will come in and uh, bring his squad at the line of scrimmage here on first and 10. Ball on the 36. One in the backfield, that's Everhart, trips to the right in tight. And uh, he will keep uh -oh. himself and... Nice job this time by Minneapolis. Number 57, Austin Crossin in on the tackle. Great job by Crossin to stay at home and wrap Benneke up. Benneke's, uh, wow, he's, he's got some good foot movement and good running ability. So. I didn't look up the um, student enrollment at Southeast, but I would assume that they're a solid 3A school. We're a 2A school. Uh, bigger 2A, one of the bigger 2As. Yeah, that's true. But numbers do make a difference. And, of course, when we start the second season, that 2A, that 2A thing is different than the 3A thing. Yes, it is. Different level of competition. One in the backfield, once again, uh, trips in tight this Four time. Mile. Oh, this time. Yeah, early, early particularly, unless you happen to just get the powerhouse team. But uh, top to bottom, 2A is not as strong as 3A. Charlie Lynn down on the ground, and he gets up. And Charlie's a pretty tough kid, and he stays right in there. Nice job, Charlie Lynn. Austin Crossan calls out the defensive call for the Lions as Charlie gets back up and walks it off. Tough kid, Charlie Lynn. Trojans will come back on a third down and four here. 2.04 left to go in the ball game for the Trojans. Trips in tight on the right-hand side. This time, Benneke will keep it himself. And nice job by the line defense as Cameron Walker in on the stop. Nice job by Cameron Walker as well as Andy Griffith and Austin Crossan in on the tackle. Nice job by the line defense. Fourth and four. Trojans slowly just taking it off as much time as they can. Uh, we'll go... I'm assuming we'll go for it here on fourth and four. Minute 23 left to go in the ball game, folks. Uh, Southeast Saline will come away with the victory course, tonight. They could have been in their second string a few minutes ago. <laughs> 21, 21 point lead for Southeast with a minute 11 remaining. As Trojans let this one run all the way down and they call a timeout. So we're going to go ahead and uh, take one with them and uh, get a word from our sponsors here. Autotech isn't just a repair shop. No, Autotech is a professional service center. You'll find the most up-to-date equipment available to get your vehicle up and running. Autotech, truly professional, truly the best. Also, Scott Studio in Minneapolis does all types of signs from vehicles, graphics, banners, racing, full-color decals, retail signs, and much more. If you need a sign, here's your sign. Scott Studio, where quality is promised and the price is always right. CNR Planning would like to take this time to thank their many friends and customers for making their business what it is today. Kevin also wants to wish the Minneapolis Lions a great season. CNR Planning, happy to be a Minneapolis Lions backer. Also, City Pharmacy has brought you quality professional pharmaceuticals since 1963. Joe and Amber Wall will help you with your medications, durable medical equipment, cosmetics, gifts, and greeting cards. Your hometown pharmacy, City Pharmacy, downtown Minneapolis. As they come back here, the, uh, the uh, Minneapolis Lions come back here. On defense, try to shut him down here on fourth and four. 
it would appear that Minneapolis is going to take over on down, so we may get two or three offensive plays. We have, as I mentioned earlier, we're 21, 2, 3, 24. We're 11, 12 for 24, two incept, uh, interceptions, 200 yards passing uh, for the Benick. is going to be off a close to first down uh, there. I uh, think he might have made He it. may have gotten it, guys, as Benicky rolls the right-hand side, and he may have gotten it. And uh, there will be enough that they will measure it, I, I believe. So the official will uh, bring out the sticks to measure this one. Uh, hard to see. the uh, Got a lot of purple in front of me, so it's really hard to see as the officials move them back. And they will come out to, to get the measurement. Well, I was kind of hoping we could take over on downs, but may or may not be the case. Well, I, I think, think we do. We will get to, guys. Yes, they were short. Short by, I'm glad I didn't make the call. A credit card or two. <laughs> so not uh, short by much, but Minneapolis will take over on downs with 56 seconds left to go here in the ball game as the Lions will bring, uh, will come back out here. McCulloch will get the call from his coach and come back out here to uh, with 56 seconds left to try to get something uh I'm, ass I'm assuming pass all the way. Maybe not. Maybe, maybe they'll just be content to down it, but it would appear they're going to try to throw. To the left, to the right, climb the backfield with McCulloch, and McCulloch <clears throat> will drop back to pass, and he is going to put it up in the air, uh -oh. and it's picked up <laughs> again, and this time it may come back as... As there's a holding right there, no call. Wow, how can that not be a holding call? As uh, Dusty Greer was just being held up like, like you couldn't believe. Interception brings it all the way down to the 13-yard line and for the, uh, for the Trojans. So, wow, tough one for, uh, for Keegan right there. 43 seconds left. We'll see what uh, Haxton and the uh, uh, Trojans do here. As, huh, he's going to go for it. Well, no, okay. I was going to say I. I was going to. I was going to say something negative. <laughs> so uh, they take a knee here with 35 seconds left uh, to uh, to to shut this one down. Okay, Minneapolis uh, passing uh, is going to finish the evening 12 of 25 with three interceptions, 200 yards passing for Minneapolis. So a pretty good night passing with the exception of the three picks. Yeah, uh, uh, one one pick hurt them for a touchdown. and So, so five seconds left to go in the ball game. And, that's just actually going to let this one run out. So that's going to be the ball game as the Southeast of Selene Trojans uh, make it uh, two, two wins, one loss here as the Trojans come up with a victory tonight by a score of 32-11 to 11 over the uh, Minneapolis Lions who are 0-3 to start the season. So. Next week, homecoming. Yeah, homecoming. Yes, Russell Broncos who last week we're defeated here at uh, Steve Fritz Field by a score of 30 to 6. Yeah, so uh, so we know the Southeast Sling can put on uh, some points. Now, in week one, Russell did win in week one, if I believe. Uh, they were 1-1 one and one coming into tonight, and they are at the Bennington. Uh, actually, Bennington's at Russell tonight. No, uh, Southeast is, no, 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 I'm sorry. Last week, this week's games... Uh, Russell is at, at Solomon. Is at Russell. Solomon. Oh. Bennington's at Elsley. Russell was one and one at Solomon, one and one tonight. Yeah. Bennington one and one is at El Saline, two and zero oh tonight. Mm -hmm. So uh, Bennington, you say Russell at Minneapolis next week, Dale? Yes, homecoming. Homecoming. Yeah. Homecoming. All right. Well, uh, we hope you all come out. Homecoming. I tell you what, our record isn't very good, zero and three, but. Uh, it's a, it's still exciting. It is. It is, guys. There's there's a lot of positives with these kids. Um, you know, it's it's you hate to you hate to you always want to see a victory. Yeah, wins a win, but I'm hoping that uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Torres is not damaged in the 
It, it's I, I got to be another area concussion again. area. It, well, I'm hoping they just held him out just to keep him precautionary. Fresh, precautionary the rest of the game. Um, Wouldn't have proved anything. The way he jumped up there, I'm sure he was clear-headed. But uh, I'm hoping anyway. Yeah, I, I, I'm hoping you're right on that one. So 32 to 11, the score as the Minneapolis Lions come up short tonight. A night of big plays for the Trojans, uh, and big plays just really killed us. Um, uh, Lions defense did great on on stopping them on the short stuff, but the, it's just some big plays. Benicky, wow, uh, he had a big big night passing, big night running. Yeah, I'm he was, sure he was probably he, the individual difference in the game. I'm not sure what he, uh, what, how many yards total he ended up with as an individual. Yeah, probably close to 200 even, yeah, easily. Easily, because uh, he had some big runs and some big passes. Uh, pretty good uh, pretty good individual right there. So, pretty good quarterback as the uh, Lions come short tonight, 32-11. We did talk about one positive thing, and that's the running game. We did see a running game tonight, guys. I, I was happy to see. I was... Uh, now, Moody, we didn't see late in the game. Not sure uh, if that no, was. I think they just decided right enough damage that ankle. And yeah. he, was, he was pretty tender on it, no doubt uh, about it. He's going to have a bloated ankle for a few days. I hope he's not out. Those are slow to heal. Yeah, they, 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 they can be aggravating for a long time. Yeah, I, I know. I've suffered with them myself. Um, Keegan McCulloch goes to 30 touchdowns uh, on passing. Uh, he also leads, besides red, uh, touchdown passes and yardage, he leads in interceptions. I mean, that's history, too. We won't talk about the numbers. but uh, <laughs> You know, though, guys, if you're going to if you're gonna have a passing game, you betcha. you're going to have some interceptions, Kate. Yeah, yeah. So. And, you know, a lot of those came in his uh, pressure situations. freshman and sophomore to, year. Yeah, and and, uh, well, you know, there were, there were several in St. Francis last year. We got a little yeah. bit. We got a little bit rattled yeah. last year. Yeah. Uh, circumstances were a little bit out of control, and and uh, I don't know how many picks there would have been in that game. Do you remember? Uh, I think it was five. yeah. It was a bunch. Yeah. But you know they they know they're they're looking for the pass, and so they know they're going to get some if they got some athletes back there. And, uh, but uh, well, we're seeing some maturation. It it's a process. No doubt about it. And. Uh, you know, but there, uh, in any situation, and 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 we're just going to throw out some pauses that I think are going to help us come next week um, in a game that has uh, Minneapolis has a chance for a Russell. Um, they've um, they had That's our number. A very doable game. They, I think so. Yeah, but uh, Minneapolis has an opportunity, and I I really believe that they uh, they've got some pauses that they can work from through this game. They're fun to watch. You know, it's a big play offense. You can strike from anywhere at any time. We just have our defense to get more consistent to where they're not a big play give up defense. Yeah. 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 And yeah. that's not a knock on them, but that's just been what's happened. That's history. history. Because on the, uh, on the uh, grid and the grind uh, and working hard on it, they've had some big stops, but they, they've given up some big plays, and, and that's, what it, that's what has kind of hurt us. But Minneapolis Lions go to 0-3 here as they come up short tonight. Um, where are we at on our, uh, on our sponsors here, Dale? Well, you know, I've believe... gone through all of them several times, but... Let's... Uh... let's, let's uh, turn the page. Let's go yeah. about the State Bank of Delphus here. Yeah, State Bank of Delphus is not a county bank in Minneapolis. Our locally owned community banks, which offer traditional accounts, such as checking, savings, certificates of deposit, IRAs, and loans, and online banking. But most important, they're committed to making your banking experience as easy and personal as possible. Member FDIC, an equal housing lender. And there's nothing more important than our children. That's exactly why the Lions Den was established in Minneapolis, so that they could get together in a clean and healthy environment to have fun. It's a great place to party, the Lions Den, downtown Minneapolis. We might uh, review very quickly the, the scoring for the game and uh, wrap it up. As uh, we told you earlier, an interception in the First quarter resulted in a, uh, I believe, a touchdown. Did did that yes. go for touchdown? Yeah, that it, was that was a touchdown. And uh, uh, at at the end of the quarter, Southeast led uh, six nothing. Southeast was unable to convert the PAT. Then into the second quarter, uh, a 53-yard pass by Southeast, uh, and Southeast was up 12 to nothing. And then a 
Um, and that was that took us into, no, that didn't take us into half. 27-yard field goal by Yoxel, and uh, Minneapolis closed the gap 12-3. to Then at, um, with 15 seconds remaining in the half, Southeast pulls, uncorks a 60-yard touchdown run. Res- uh, I'm sorry? Uh, no, I have a 60-yard no, 60 no, 60 60 yard yard TD yards. by Southeast you're thinking, Jocelyn, you're thinking late in the game. resulted uh, in a score 18-3 with a, a two-point PAT being good. Uh, Southeast then took a 20-3 lead into half. In the second half, 11-yard um, touchdown to par- pass by Minneapolis to Argenbright closed the gap. Uh, then... Uh, PAT pass was completed, uh, resulting in a score of 26 to 11. Then the then your 95 t- uh, touch or uh, 95 yard touchdown run by Southeast. Southeast then led 32 11 32 to 11 with no conversion on the PAT. And that that really killed us because we had driven the ball all the way down to the five yard line and uh, had completed, gotten a couple fourth down conversions on that drive. Uh, couldn't get that one, and, and that one really, really got us on that, that one. Ended the, that ended the scoring for the game, and then uh, Minneapolis, however, uh, late in the game gave up a couple interceptions, having, though, a couple of nice offensive drives in that fourth quarter. We were unable to come away with any points, but... It was kind of encouraging to see nice, sustained offensive drives by Minneapolis. But late in the game, things got kind of a little bit desperate, and uh, we gave up a couple of interceptions, but didn't result in the loss of any points. But still, Minneapolis comes up short tonight. Uh, Southeast 32, the Lions 11. But we're going to be back next week, guys, as uh, homecoming next week at home as uh, Minneapolis will come in uh, against Russell. We're not sure how Russell did tonight. Uh, Solomon was at Russell, so we'll uh, yeah, check the papers on that one tomorrow. But um, but Minneapolis will be at home against Russell for homecoming. Uh, positives that come out of this game, guys, has got to be the fact that we established a little bit of a run game. Absolutely. So, so. Let's just hope that those runners can come yes, back. Yes, yeah. Uh, both of them a little dinged up towards the end of the game, but we'll see how they do. So uh, I think uh, that's – Probably not going to have a coach show. No, I, I thought I saw a coach out. go. So. And, uh, so we'll be back for homecoming next week. Come on and support these Lions. They're exciting to watch. Got a lot of positive things to look for. Absolutely. So for myself, Scott Osherman, uh, Dave Rupert, and Dale Leach, we're going to say goodnight here on 910KNA.com as well as Channel 8 Eagle to Communication in Minneapolis. Thanks for listening, and come out and watch the Lions play at home for homecoming next week as they take on the Russell Broncos. So goodnight from Steve Fritzfield here at Southeast Asleep. Thanks for having us in your home. <laughs>